Hey everybody, welcome to another live stream. I don't know what this is. <laughs> we're gonna we're testing out something new. So hi, I'm Steve. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. Uh, good afternoon to a lot of you, and uh, good evening or good night to anybody else who's hanging around. Good morning. Um, so yeah, I hope uh, the audio is okay. I hope you could see me. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce your name. D. Oh, my camera's blocking it. So. Uh, Happy birthday, Dimin Diminialba. That's the best I could do at such short notice. Sorry, sorry, I butchered your name. T type your real name in, and I'll, I'll, I'll say happy birthday to you. But happy birthday, buddy. Um, all right, cool. So I am in uh, a little bit of a different part of the basement than I usually am. Uh, I'm a few feet over from my streaming desk. So, uh, DM. Okay, happy birthday, DM. There we go. Um, so. I actually had to just run a very long USB cable and a very long video cable for this monitor because I'm shifted all the way over here. So David, okay, happy birthday, David. Glad we got that cleared up. So um, today we're gonna be trying something a little different. So I have a, a very convoluted uh, VGA capture solution involving a splitter and a scaler and a capture box and everything. And what I'm gonna be doing is playing around with this lovely Mac clone here. So this is a power computing Macintosh. It wasn't made by Apple, it was made by a company called Power Computing. Uh, this is a Power Center Pro 180, and it runs the Mac OS. It was officially licensed by Apple for a period of time in the, the later half of 1996 or 97, I believe. And um, so, yeah, that's, that's what we're gonna be playing around with today. But uh, first, I got some super chats already before the stream even began, which is very cool. So eep to Greg and eep to Christian. Thank you very much for the super chats. I greatly appreciate it. Um, I'm just catching up on some of the streams here. Uh, the chat, rather. I can't even speak today. Uh, I, I can't speak any day. But uh, M. Pickett picked up a color classic. Very cool. And uh, let's see. Uh, Sean got a Mac Pro. Very nice. And up, oh, yep. Yeah, some of you like the new intro. That's cool. I'm glad. Some of you are playing around with MacBooks today. Uh, so you say my intro is fancy schmancy. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ah, you have the tower version of that. Very cool. Yeah, I just have this one. It did come with the box and everything, so I'm, I'm quite happy to have that. Um, did, did you know? There's so many Mac clones. I only have two. I have a power computing one, and I have a UMAX one. But I'm happy to have those. I'm happy to have those. Yeah, there's, there's a whole video I'm doing about the history of the Mac clones, and I am really pushing myself to try and finish that, because it's been in progress for about two years now, or, or over that at this point, and uh, I just need to get off my butt and finish it, but it's easier said than done. So uh, I appreciate uh, all the, the careful prodding done by the Mac Yak crew to try and get me to finish that, but uh, yeah, that is something I'm, I'm going to try and get done very soon, because there's, there's a lot of cool uh, things about these computers, and uh, some of them are great. Some of them are very powerful and expandable. Others are just like non-Apple branded computer versions. So, <laughs> yeah, so um, it's funny you mentioned that, Sean, because when I got this, the hard drive didn't work. So I was able to swap out the hard drive. Uh, the CD drive is fairly easy to swap out, too. Uh, it doesn't have to be an Apple CD drive because you have that, uh, as long as you have the software that came with this machine, which is CD-ROM Toolkit, which allows you to use a non-Apple CD-ROM drive. So... Hey, Greg, you missed me giving you an eep, so eep. Thank you, Greg, very much for your super chat. And uh, we're just doing introductions here, so just uh, explain to people I'm shifted over from the other side of the basement. There's a bunch of stuff going on here, and uh, I have no idea what's going to go on. So uh, what I'm going to do is uh, set this up. So let me get the, uh, the video capture box set up here so we can, we can have that here. So let me just make sure that uh, everything here is gonna be set up correctly. So just give me a moment as I tinker around with this. Oh, that doesn't seem to wanna, oh, I'm sorry. My microphone is like right in the, so I had to move everything over here. I'm on a little tray table. <laughs> so my microphone is all sitting up, up up here in front of the screen. So I thought, if you see me moving around or squinting, that's why. Uh, Brian is working on a video for his Apple II server. Ah, oh, very cool. I played around with those, uh, one of those a while ago. And uh, I, I did not have, uh, yeah, I set it up once and then I just didn't have the space to set it up again. So that's, that's something I am looking forward to messing around with. That would be, that'd be pretty cool. All right, so it looks like I have to re-add something here because OBS is not working. 
Yes, that is true. I believe when you did order the 20th anniversary Macintosh when it was new, uh, someone in a limo and a tuxedo would come and set it up for you. <laughs> I that's that's just I, that's just very interesting to me because that type of experience by Apple, I, it's pretty neat to be honest. But I that's something I never obviously experienced. So, oh hey. Thank you, Greg, for another super chat. Eep. So yeah, we're almost at 2,000 subscribers. Um, I will be doing some sort of giveaway. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing yet. I don't plan that far ahead, as many of you could probably tell. Uh, <laughs> but but uh, I do appreciate it, and uh, I will be uh, announcing whatever I decide to do at some point or another. Okay, it looks like we got this set up here. Let me try and transition, and you should see the desktop of a Macintosh. There we go. I had to I had to uncheck the audio thing. It's always a little dodgy when I switch things here. Sometimes the audio doesn't doesn't come up. <laughs> I'm not I'm not sending hair to anybody. That is <laughs> that is a little weird, Jay. That's a bit of a strange request. I've gotten some interesting emails and, and chats over the, the years. But that, not that yet. So let's not encourage anybody. The mic sounds a bit worse. All right, let's make sure that uh, we have the right microphone selected here. There we go. I think that's much better. I think it was defaulting to uh, to the um, webcam mic for a second there. But uh... <laughs> all right, Christian. Well, thank you for the super chat. Eep. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That was a bad eep. Eep. There. Wait. Actually, wait a second. I think we could give you a proper eep here. Let's, let's give you a proper eep. There we go. You probably can't hear that too well, but let's let's try and bring the microphone over just a little bit. There, you, you got a bit of an eep there, Christian. Thank you. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, this VGA capture solution is a bit... Uh, a threep, yes, is a bit... Uh, uh, set up a little bit differently. So essentially uh, what I figured out over the years of me pulling what's remaining of my hair out trying to figure this out is essentially um, your standard VGA, I'm sorry, HDMI uh, video capture boxes that are designed for video game consoles and stuff like that. They are essentially made for television signals, not computer signals. So that uh, being said, it's very difficult to get a 640 by 480 at 67 hertz video signal to make uh, a nice connection to a capture box that will accept that signal and that will work with it correctly. So I could go out and I could spend three or $400 on a fancy VGA or DVI capture box. That'll do that for me, but I'm not going to spend that kind of money because that's a little bit ridiculous on that. Uh, I have spent uh, another machine... Um, uh, uh, I did spend about $150 on a DVI capture card for a uh, PC, but unfortunately, uh, that really did not work too well because OBS didn't detect it. Uh, older versions of OBS did, but not the newer ones, so that didn't really work out for me. Um, and so what I ended up doing is my friend Jay from the House of Moth, who's in the chat, or uh, also participates in MacYak, uh, he sent me a video scaler that had a bad power supply, and I fixed that up. And so essentially what this scaler does is it acts as a switch box and a scaler. So you get video signal in, like VGA, and then you get HDMI out. So HDMI out is going to be 720p or 1080p or whatever, and that is a signal that the capture card likes. And so this capture card I got, it's actually a cheapo one. Let me grab the box here. This is a cheapo one I got from China. I'm still doing some tests on it. It was only uh, $55 shipped. Not bad at all. It comes in this generic box. There's nothing fancy to look at. Uh, I can't show you the box because it's on the other side of the room plugged in. But essentially you have HDMI in and HDMI out and a USB 3 port. I'm actually using it over USB 2 because I'm not doing anything too crazy and it's working fine. But uh, that's the solution I'm working on here. So we have VGA to this VGA splitter here which you can't see because I'm yeah right over there. Uh, so it splits the VGA signal. So I have the monitor and then I have the, uh, the capture box. 
and uh, then we have, you know, all that going through. So it's a bit convoluted, but it seems to be working quite well. Fingers crossed. It's the first time I'm using it for more than five minutes. So, <laughs> oh boy. Um, answer some of the questions here. Yeah, Apple used DB15 because uh, they had extra pins there. And the reason behind that, I believe, is some of the, the machines had different graphics capabilities as far as syncing on green with monitors and different things. Um, and so they, they just decided to use a different connector for whatever reason. And uh, it is usually electri electrically compatible with VGA using a proper adapter. You either have the adapter with no dip switches or with dip switches. And so that is helpful. Um, yeah, those adapters are pretty cheap. You get them for under 10 or 15 bucks. They still make them today. So if you uh, are going to be using an LCD on an old Mac, I highly suggest you pick that up. Yeah, CRT's flickering is a, is a bit weird, but uh, I will make a blog post or a free Patreon post that's public to have uh, an example of how I'm doing this. The scaler is probably going to be the most expensive part, but usually on eBay, those things are a little outdated, so you could probably get them pretty cheap. Yeah, it all depends on it all depends on the uh, the adapter and if it's if the video card is expecting a sync on green signal or of a different variety than what the Macintosh is expecting. So it could be a little problematic. But anyway, um, I didn't really plan this, so you're going to be seeing the side of me a little bit. But um, what I have here, as you can see, I have a messy desktop here, and um, what I've been doing is using this machine to back up a lot of disks. Now this machine works pretty well. So it is a clone, but it has a CD drive here and it has a floppy disk drive. And I've used this thing for a lot of stuff uh, and it's been working out quite well. So let's look at the system specs here. Uh, this is running system 7.6. We have a whopping 212 megabytes of memory. So that's plenty of memory for system 7.6. Um, and what we're gonna be doing is imaging some disks. So I have a container of disks here. Uh, some of them I've imaged already. Some of them I have to image again. Uh, and that's what we're going to be doing. I do not have a radius Mac. I wish I did. I just do not. And uh, yeah, so uh, some of the things I've imaged already. Uh, we have a CD-ROM toolkit. We have some Sidekick software here. And all of this stuff will be uh, uploaded to Macintosh Garden. So that is where I will be uploading most of this stuff. Um, 7.6 is probably one I'm going to be running on this for the foreseeable future. Uh, however, what I will be doing is also uh, putting uh, another OS on here, maybe if I partition the hard drive, because there's a, there's a pretty big hard drive in here. I think it's like almost 40 gigs. Oh, eight gigs. Never mind. I think the 40 gig one died. But anyway, <laughs> that's pretty, that's still a pretty good amount of space. But uh, yeah. All right. So um, let's see. Well, first off, I have this disc here. Uh, this is a PCI graphics video uh, software card for a uh, micro conversions uh, video card. And this is like a video capture card. I actually bought this and did an unboxing video of this a while ago. And uh, here's the manual that came with it. And I don't know if this disk is archived, so we might as well archive that. So I'm going to put it in the floppy drive. And through the magic of video capture, you should see that on the desktop there. Here we go. All right, let's do read me first. All right, so this is for Video Wizard cards. Really? Is that what this says? Yep, Video Wizard. And this is, this is like a, a TV capture card. You got all your, uh, you know, inputs, composite, as video, you know, standard def stuff. What's the micro thing in the control strip? It looks like some sort of capture thing. Yeah, so the built-in uh, video capture, I'm sorry, the, um, the built-in control panels default to having a... Uh, some type of video out and I think it's just installed by default because some of these machines uh, from power computing were offered with better graphics cards mine just has VGA and DB15 on the back it actually has two ports but you can only drive one monitor at a time uh, but that is just there I guess if you had that installed uh, it's just there so I'm not I'm not really gonna mess with it but hey maybe maybe it's compatible with one of these cards I have so uh, but yeah this is just a manual for it I'll be scanning it in at some time in the future but let's uh, let's uh, archive this disk actually I'm going to try and move this screen a bit closer to me because we're on a little table. There we go. Yes, uh, Apple did have a presentation system. It was manufactured by InFocus Systems, I believe. Uh, and it was just a rebranded thing in a box. I have one somewhere, actually. Uh, but it's just, it's just a VGA to composite video. It's nothing really too nice. But anyway, 
Uh, let's see. Hope you guys can hear me okay when I turn my head here. Uh, if not, I'll, maybe I'll have to reposition the microphone or something. But uh... Alright, so, yeah, focus enhancement. Something like that. I always forget their name. But, uh, yeah, let's make a disk image of this. So we're going to open up disk copy 3. And I'm using disk copy 3 because this is not an older disk. It should be fine. I'm going to select read only because that will be the fastest way to do this. Um, and read only just does not compress it. I don't have to worry about compression. I have plenty of disk space here. Uh, we're going to go to backup disks, my folder here. I'm going to make a new folder uh, called uh, video wizard. And we're just going to save. That's going to read the floppy disk and hopefully make a successful image. Where'd my bottle of water go? I had a bottle of water. There it is. I'll be right back. Well, that's what I was doing. I meant to send a tweet out, but my copy and paste wasn't working on Twitter. Let me try that again. There we go. Now that's done. Okay. Ever heard of old Seagate hard drive by GCC Technologies? Uh, I have not, but uh, I'm not an expert on that. So um, that, that is something that has eluded me. But I do have a very old Seagate drive that's in an Apple III profile uh, external hard drive. It's only 5 megs. So <laughs> that's a pretty big one. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. So that disk was imaged successfully which is nice so I'm, I'm i apologize in advance if you guys are ex expecting more exciting stuff but we're just gonna be imaging some discs maybe i'll be playing around with some software on here but that's really about it we're just playing around having fun relaxing <laughs> uh, all right so yeah let's eject that floppy let's see what, what software do i have on here actually i'm curious Acrobat, Appleworks, CD-ROM Toolkit, Disk Dupe, which are very handy for the older floppies. Um, uh, Drop Stuff, Fetch, Graphic Inverter, Hard Disk Toolkit, Internet Explorer, Office, Newton Connection Utilities, Print Shop Deluxe, QuickTime, Res Edit, SCSI Probe, Set Date, very important. Um, shrink Wrap, Simple Text, Simple Text 1.3. <laughs> I don't know why I have to. Uh, stuff at Deluxe, Stuff at Expander, uh, and uh, a CD-ROM mounting utility, which is pretty handy. Um, what's interesting is, if you are a patron of my channel, and you meet certain qualifications, uh, you will get a printout from my ImageWriter printer, a nice little certificate thanking you for supporting the channel. And uh, just to, to share some behind-the-scenes goodies here, uh, when you do get that printout, that is coming from this ImageWriter 2 printer, which has <laughs> tons of paper attached to it. Um, and that, uh, that printer is actually printing documents uh, from this power computing device uh, machine that I have here. So, um, yeah. <laughs> hey, that piece of paper is historic. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, let me adjust the camera here because I messed it up. Ah, That's the joy of not being at your standard setup here. All right, cool. All right, so uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, all right, we did that disc. Let's see what else we got. Uh, True Type Backup Disc. Well, some of these are PC games. Wolfenstein 3D, Duke Nukem, Poker Slot, Windows Icons. <laughs> well, we won't be imaging that on this. This is a PC disc, so we'll uh, we'll put that to the side. And when we're playing with a PC, we'll we'll do that. Another PC disc. Pen font signature. Okay. Oh, this one I did already. This is CD-ROM toolkit. I did do this already. Uh, you know what? Here. Anything I've done already, but I need to like take pictures of the front to upload to Macintosh Garden. I will uh, put in this little organizer here. <laughs> We're very organized here, obviously. Smart alarm and diary. Okay. Smart com facts. This looks like a software package. Facilitate. All right, let's let's image that one. Why the heck not? I don't know anyone who's going to use it, but 
All right, so we got the install disk, then we have disk two. So let's put in the install disk. Any questions you, you guys have or anything like that, you are free to uh, to type them in the comment section. I will respond to them. Uh, yes, I'm going to figure out what that is too, Aaron. I have no idea. That's that's part of the fun of going through this is because I have no idea what some of these things are. Uh, this stack looks to be mostly PC disks. But uh, I will see what this is. It has a, has a date of December 15th, 1988. So we'll see. All right, so let's uh, back this disc up also. And this, this machine is pretty zippy too. And of course, as soon as I say that, it's gonna crash, but. Yeah, CD-ROM Toolkit is an excellent utility. Uh, so the 2SI is one of those Macintoshes that is very picky about its output. Most LCD monitors and some Macintosh branded Apple monitors will not work on the 2SI. And that is because of, I believe, the sync on green uh, setup. So if you have one of those adapters with dip switches, you may be able to set it up if it has enough switches on there to correctly identify which sync on green that machine is actually looking for. And you should be okay. So that's, uh, that, that's something that I, I've dealt with before. All right, so disk one is copied. Let's do disk two. Oh, that's sad. Sorry about your broken screen there. That's a shame. I mean, I get broken stuff too. I hey, the I mean, I'll be doing a video on it, so I won't say all the details here. But uh, I just paid an arm and a leg for an ultrasonic cleaner, and it arrived broken. So <laughs> sometimes you just can't win. <clears throat> yeah so it's funny i've actually been trying to use this vga capture stuff since i started doing a video on a powerbook duo which i never finished because of this video capture stuff uh so now i, I think i'll be able to actually go back and finish that which will be nice um because i do have a duo dock and i have a powerbook duo and i've been wanting to show show off some of those things but uh, I wanted to record some of the screen too yeah that very crusty Macintosh classic board and you know I, I'm dying to show you pictures of that but I, I am forcing myself to actually do a scripted video on it I wrote the script I recorded a lot of it I'm just going to work on this weekend to edit that out and uh, hopefully it'll be out very soon Oh, well, good luck there, Tekken Music. That is, uh, th that is a, a long trip, but I, I, you know, those, those are built pretty rugged. I, I, I hope you'll be okay. We'll hope that classic will pull through. All right, so I'm just ejecting those discs here, and uh, we're going to try this, uh, this set smart alarm and diary. Now, a lot of these discs came from a particular business and they like to uh, copy a lot of their software so some of these discs are, discs are not original and some of them are so if they're a copy sometimes I'll, I'll copy them twice oh, and the disc is unreadable by this Macintosh that is a shame uh, it might be a PC piece of software to be honest because um, they did have some PCs at that office but uh, we're gonna put this to the side uh, you know I'll insert it one more time just in case Nope, doesn't like it. <laughs> All right, so that's going to go in. We need a separate pile for those. Um, I have, uh, let's see. Let me make some room here. All right, PC discs are going to go in this box that I'm putting off camera. There we go. Uh, Got a bunch of other PC discs. These all just say like backup. I'm sure it's just like parts of personal data that 
1940 backup. Yeah, th these might be like tax information. <laughs> Multimate files, whatever that is, from 2001. So these discs aren't too old. I'll just put one in. Let's see. Hey, Crazy Tech Reviews. All right, so that is a PC disc. It is clicking a lot. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, this light is not doing me any favors. That's a little dark. What do you guys think? Light on? Light off. Light on? Light off. <laughs> Light on. It, it makes it makes me look like an albino, but hey, I read the disc. That's a lot of Microsoft Office documents. Huh. Yeah, this looks like tax uh, software stuff. So I'm not going to open up any <laughs> very sensitive information live on the stream. Uh, people in New Jersey will do that to you. <laughs> I'm not one of them, but just saying. Not all of us are as friendly as your, your neighborhood Mac 84 guy. <laughs> oh, here we go. Look. The same disc that we tried to copy. Right here. Here's the original. Uh, let's see if I back this up already. I might have. Nope, I have not. So let's see if the original works. Jam multi-user diaries. Oh, I already made a, a disk image of that. Okay. So that that's the disk image from it. So we don't got to copy that. I do like floppy disks as well. Well, here's not a here's not a floppy. It's actually a super floppy. This is an Imation super disk. It actually could hold 120 megabytes. Yeah, people are rude. Uh, let's see. Got some blank labeled ones. I think these are actually blank. Um, yeah, see, I, I made some disk tool images. Uh, so I could boot off of Macs quite easily. And uh, I actually have to make more of these. So maybe I'll make some more of these during the stream. Uh, this is a network access disk. And uh, this is a disk tools disk for 7.6. Got the same power center along with the color classic. Very cool. Speaking of don't copy that floppy, hold please. Let me just switch this over for a second. Where's my, where's my cursor? There we go. Let's just switch this over for a second. Because I have something interesting to share. So this is from Apple. It's uh, from the Apple developer group. It says honesty on the front. And over here, it says, don't copy that floppy. It's amazing the things I have in my collection. Now, if we open this up, we'll see a pamphlet here. It says, honesty on the front. And then it says, is the best software policy. So if we open this up, we see there's a spread. It's an entire poster. And this is about, you know, how much, you know, work goes into making software. And there's this beautiful poster. <laughs> it's, 
Isn't that cool? So, ways to cut down on piracy in organizations, guidelines for individuals, blah, 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 blah. Uh, while I appreciate the effort, Apple, I am archiving things and preserving them. So, I'm choosing not to read that. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, so this this is something interesting that I that I found while I was going through some things. Uh, I think it's really cool. I'll probably have to scan it in because I, I don't think I've seen it anywhere. But uh, it's uh, something that was... Uh, sent off so um, to people I guess maybe who bought a computer I have no idea uh, maybe the developer group only who knows <laughs> breaking the law all right back to our our crazy things here yeah I love I love stuff like that too it's a lot of fun all right so what else we got um, did I already do this one See. It's been a while since I did this, so I'm just making sure I don't have anything that I forgot about. So uh, this is Mac Draft. This is some type of drafting software, one would assume. And uh, I think I did this one. Did I? Yeah, so uh, this is a Texas Instruments PostScript printer description file. Might be useful to somebody. So uh, we'll try that out. Let's do the Mac draft first. We got a startup disk and a program disk. And since it says startup and it has a copyright date of 1986, I'm going to assume this is for like the Macintosh Plus or some, some machine around that era. Let's hopefully it still reads. Let's see. Hey, there we go. System disk. Ooh, Apple Talk Image Writer. There we go. All right, so uh, let's use a disk dupe. I think that's the best way to do these. And so we want to load the master disk here. This is a 400K disk. How about that? Oh, nice. You got that power book. Pretty cool. It's a home design program. Okay, cool. All right. So looking for a copy disk for writing. No, we're just going to save this image and we're going to call this Mac draft. And uh, we're going to put it in our backup disks. And we're just going to save it there. Okay. So it eeped because that was the system load I set it to. And uh, we're going to set up the uh, insert the, ne the next disk for it to image. Uh, this is actually a Macintosh clone. It's made by Power Computing. And it's a Power Center Pro 180. <laughs> Yeah, the, the noise matches it, too. So the microphone's probably not picking it up, but... You should do that, because I probably need that ADB driver, too. Although my graphics gamepad is actually a serial one, not an ADB one. Oh, come on. You can do it. Uh, they made diff very diff many different revisions of the Mac Plus. Some were beige, some were platinum in color. They just had many different of them over the years they sold them. So that's why some of them look different. Just different revisions, that's all. Well, while this reads, I'm going to take a little break. I'll be right back in one minute. So uh, just watch the screen. Oh, no. Uh, we'll retry it. I'll be right back in a minute.
to be getting stuck at the same spot, unfortunately. Hey, Trina. Let me see what I missed. Yeah, discover again, unfortunately. Yeah, the ED ones are interesting. Some of the Macintosh EDs are not labeled. Some are, apparently. So what's going on is we are imaging disks. Uh, this one, unfortunately, keeps giving us an error. I'm going to try one more time. We're just backing up disks that I have. Going to put them on Macintosh Garden eventually. Software like this, or like this. <laughs> I have a fancy VGA capture solution set up so you can see my screen. Um, yes, there was an upgrade program. Yep. Um, but this disk does not want to work. So uh, what I will try and do is I'll just put it in just so I can see what files are on it. Not going to image it, but. Let's take a screenshot of it. Let's see if I, sometimes you could copy stuff over manually. Let's see. Because sometimes it's trying to copy, like, blank sectors and stuff like that. Ideally, you want a disk image, but if, if this is the best you could do, it's better than nothing. Yep. And it copied, see? So that worked okay. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to make a disk image of that folder... And I'm just going to save that here. And now I'm just going to denote that that was a manual copy here. Let's just put everything where it belongs. So this is disk two, manual copy, oh, no, sure, manual is about to do, and this is disk one, okay, cool, so at least we got the software off of that, I have no idea, I've never played around with this stuff, all right, Greg, enjoy your nap. <laughs> uh, I'm just imaging them. Um, this looks like some type of architectural design software. I could double click on it. I don't know if it's actually going to launch though. Let's see. It'll probably crash the system. <laughs> yeah, then did, did not like that. <laughs> so who knows if there's a copy with the data, but we tried. All right, what else we got? Got a bunch of disks. Another super disk. Oh, this is numbered. Does anybody remember why I numbered these disks? Yeah, probably doesn't like the PowerPC CPU. Does anybody remember why I, why I put a little label on these disks? I remember, I'm just asking if you remember. Giveaway numbers, Jay is correct. That's right. So for my 1,000 subscriber giveaway, I put little numbered labels on a bunch of floppy disks. I just spread them apart on my desk, and I just picked up a random one. <laughs> I think I'll have more submissions this time, so I might not be able to do that. Uh, this disk is just labeled Mac. Pretty sure it's just a startup disk I made. So let's, let's put it in here. See what it is. Mac Disk 2. Uh, system software. <laughs> okay, I had a disk image of System 6 software. Let's back that up, I guess. Type, 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 type. You got a presidential power book there. <laughs> 
Yes, I, I do like uh, the super disk drives. Unfortunately, like all of them I have, even one that was brand new didn't want to work. It would, it would just not format the disk. I tried on a Windows machine. I tried on a laptop. I tried on an iMac. I pulled my hair out thinking about that stupid thing, trying to get it to work. But I may all try again. Yep, yeah, it was an old PC disk. I just overwrote it. I'll just put that in the pile over here of stuff I could write over if I need it. Um, Diamond Entertainment Corporation presents... Windows 95, a first look. <laughs> oh, that stinks. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this. I made this floppy disk over 10 years ago. July 4th, 2010. Apple Tech Step. So, I made this disk a long time ago. Let's see. Let's see what's still on it. That doesn't sound good. It's making noises. Oh, here we go. So it just looks like TechStep software. Um, not an original disk, but I'll copy the data off it anyway. So, um, I don't believe these discs are recognized because they are a flop of a floptical nature, I believe. Um, but this drive, the LS120 Super Drive, a uh, Super Disk Drive, will read and write uh, floppies, but uh, regular floppies. But I don't believe it works the other way around. All right, we got uh, Ken Kensington Mouseworks software. Got that will image that. <laughs> One megabyte in disk. So there's there's uh, quite a bit on here. Let's see what version this is. Five oh four. January 1998. So that, that dates this. I always love seeing dates on these things. I know it's pretty cool. Yeah, I'll have to try that one time, Aaron. That that might not be a bad idea. I'm sure someone else has done it, so... But I'm sure the manual probably even says what to do. But... Yeah, maybe someone did a, a, a paper on him or was obsessed with him. <laughs> I'm pretty sure a presidential power book would probably have not gotten into the hands of someone on eBay. But you never know. Got a botch of, box of discs here. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I, these are going to be useful, but... Uh, MS Word 6, disc 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11... 12, 13, where's the first disc? Well, <laughs> this was Microsoft Word. Uh, I wonder if these are Mac discs or not. Let's see. I'm curious. Yep, it's... Uh the heck kind of a disc is this? I think it's a Mac disc. Yeah, it is a Apple disc, but uh, I don't have the first disc. I only have disc 2 through 13. Maybe I'll find the other one. Uh, yes, this is a Macintosh clone. It's not new. It's uh, something I've had for a little while. I'll turn the light off for a second. You can see ah, it's more beige than white. But there it is. Um... Yeah, do do that. Do, archive them. Why not? Archive all the discs. All of them. That's what I do. Uh, you know what? This probably wouldn't run UT pretty... Be it real run it okay. I mean, this is a, a 200... I'm sorry, 180 megahertz... 
processor. It's not a G3. Um, it's, uh, I, I'd probably need to put a better graphics card in there. Might run it okay. <laughs> Be pushing it, though. Um, what else we got? Turbo Mouse Custom Control Panel. This is probably on Macintosh Garden, but it never hurts. You never know if you have a different version of something or something like that. Yeah, it's an 800K disc, so we're going to use a, a disc dupe, which is a little bit friendlier to those discs, and make sure that it copies them correctly. Hope you guys are enjoying seeing this screen, because it's... It's been a, a lot of work to try and get that to work, so I hope it's enjoyable to you guys. I, I think it's cool. You get to see exactly what I'm clicking on, and it's better than me pointing a camera to the screen. Next thing I'll have to do is route the audio into this, so if this beeps or something, you'll be able to hear it a little bit better. <laughs> I'm I'm glad it's being used too, Jay. Thank you very much again for it. That image correctly. How about that? So actually, let me let me label these disk images a bit better than just that because I'm going to forget. Uh, let me close this here. Oh, I I didn't save the darn thing. I'm an idiot. Hold on. So what you have to do is you have to hit save image, otherwise it just assumes you're going to put in another disk for it to copy. Oops. Let's, let's read that disk again. I'm getting too excited. Just notice the clock on this computer is set very incorrectly. We'll have to fix that. It might force us to to crash the system, though. So let's be careful. I believe it's it's probably saving it to a temporary file, either in the hard drive or on the memory J. But I don't think it does really anything with that, unless you hit that save button. I could be wrong, though. So now hit save. It froze. How about that? I was saying this machine is pretty stable. It froze. I'm going to have to reboot this sucker. All right. Well, who wants to see a boot? Because you're about to. No chime. That's a bit concerning. Let me turn it off and turn it back on. Please? There we go. Okay. I got worried there for a second. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time one of my computers died live on a stream. Hard drive is spinning up. Come on. Oh, don't be a pain in the butt. Come on. It does this sometimes. There we go. Whew. I have a lot of extensions. Well, the hard drive is a very loud, scuzzy drive. Uh, so it, it, some of those sounds are normal. <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> That's why I do actually have this thing networked. Uh, I can't do it right away, but uh, I will network stuff and copy stuff over to uh, this other Mac, which is sitting right next to it. Ah! 
uh, that little G4 tower. I will copy a lot of the contents to that over the Ethernet switch that is sitting above the handle there on that virtual PC box. So that is uh, that is what I usually do. There we go. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we were much more paranoid back then. All right, eep. Let's see if it actually saved that disk image. Doesn't look like it did. Dare we try again? Of course we should. I mean, the shutdown button, I believe, is just, like, the same as the menu bar, so it should work. But you got to see a Mac clone boot up, so <laughs> you don't see that very much on YouTube. <laughs> At least from a video capture perspective. So that's why it crashed. Matt wasn't here. Okay. Let's just try and save it to the desktop here. Okay, it didn't crash that time. That's good. This has a copyright date of 1988. All right, and then this one here was version 504 from January 1998. Okay, just trying to keep a little bit organized here. <laughs> yeah, those those old hard drives are fun to hear. So this is disk. Oop, wasn't anything if I dropped it. Uh, Macintosh Disk 2 of Quick Cam software. I believe I have another one of them somewhere, so I'm not going to image this right now. Um, let's see if there's anything else I got here. Unlabeled discs. Let's see what's on them. They probably are blank, but who knows. We got a Maxell brand Super RD MF2 HD double sided high density. I miss floppies. Alright, so these look like they're blank. Let's see. Backup zero zero one. Yeah, I don't think we need those discs files any those uh, files anymore. I'm not gonna try and resurrect somebody's convoluted backup. I have my own backups I need to mess with. Backup zero zero two. Those are going in the pile that I could erase. <laughs> Got these little covers that they came with. Oh, you got some labels too. How about that? So we've been going for about almost an hour now. How you guys doing? Uh, you didn't miss too much, Nolan. I mean, uh, no, we're uh, messing around with some old discs here. We're imaging some stuff. We're seeing what's on some discs. Having a good old time. Uh, buying floppy disks is always a fond memory. Right, what else we got here? We have a clip art disc three. Let's see if we can find the rest of those. I think I did this one already. It's called Fast Back Two. I guess it's like a backup software. Oh, 
Oh, there's the other quick cam disc. All right, so we'll we'll do that, I guess. Where'd I put the other one? Ah, uh, I had it somewhere. There we go. You have a full set. All right. See, it's exciting already. You got to see the Macintosh crash at, crash at least once. Now, I do actually have a, a conveniently a quick cam camera right here. And so this is a webcam that uh, does connect to the serial port of the computer. As you can see right here. Uh, these things are riddled with capacitors. And they just don't work, really. Um, so uh, this, I believe, is a black and white one. I don't think this is a color one. Uh, this is actually a, gra a black and white uh, camera, but um, yeah, I have to fix this one. Uh, the software here is actually for the color one, which I don't have. If anybody has a color one, they want to donate it to me, I'll play around with it. But uh, yeah, I have, to, I have to fix that. All right, let's uh, save that. Oh, that's not... That sauce is not good for a Power Mac. No siree. <laughs> I'm glad I'm glad we were able to accommodate you, Trina. <laughs> All right, so that disc was copied successfully. Ah, what did I do? Let's try the second one. Again, this stuff is probably already archived, but doesn't hurt to have a, a second copy, maybe a different version. Oh, no. <laughs> it didn't like this one. What's wrong with it? Maybe somebody erased it already or put a magnet next to it. Ah, oh, that's a shame. All right, well, we got one at least. They go into documents. It's on the desktop, but I don't see it. I must be blind. Oh, here it is. Now let's put those in there too. Okay, these are, <laughs> that's, that's a uh, system software. I'll put that there. Clean up. Ooh, that's disgusting. Yeah, no, thank you. All right, what else we got here? We got a bunch of, bunch of floppies. Windows 95 boot disk. We don't need those. Uh, let's let's go back to our pile here. System startup, sure. Let's see, I think I found a, a, a one that goes with another one. Hold on. I keep dropping floppies here. <sighs> okay. Uh, system startup. Alright, so this looks like your standard Macintosh system startup disk. Uh, sure, I'll copy it. Why not? This is system 6.0.7 from 1990. It's a high density disk here. I keep dropping these floppies. Oh, 
Oh, don't tempt me, Jay. You know how many PC parts I have? I can easily do that. <laughs> I just need one of those, like, Gateway 2000 towers that has, like, ten drive bays. <laughs> I passed on a few of those. There was a few at a three store, a thrift store, and I just, I didn't pick them up. They're just so big and bulky. Now, if it was a, a Quadra 900 or something. That'd be different. All right, so that one is done. Uh, I guess we'll do disc three of clip art because why not? No! Maybe we could copy it manually. Uh, zip disks are amazing. Back in the day, those were a godsend. Ah! Well, that's the end of that, I guess. Uh, I had a few PC servers set up at one time. I, I don't really use them, really. So you found a broken... You have a broken SCSI zip drive. You should grab a parallel one to fix it? The parallel port Windows ones are not compatible with the Mac, if that would, is that what you're saying. I don't think that's what you're saying, but... You mean like a, a PATA or an ATA one? An IDE one, maybe? Right, let's try uh, Fastback 2. But yes, zip disks make transferring larger files between Macs very easy if they're not networked. What is Fastback? Okay, so this is like a tape backup software, it seems. Oh, I see. So you're going to swap the mechanism internally. Okay. I, I don't know why SCSI drives are so stupid expensive all of a sudden. I have literally like a bin full of them. Half of them work, half of them don't. But <laughs> you shouldn't pay more than $10 for a SCSI uh, 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 zip drive, an external one for that matter. They made millions of those things. Millions. Uh, yeah, you could transfer Apple Talk stuff with Windows as long as you have something like Windows uh, that has uh, Apple Talk software installed. Windows 2000 Release 4 has an Apple Talk server built into it. You just got to configure it, but it should work. You just might need some extra software. Oh, that's neat. Show SCSI, an application with Lips SCSI. Uh, devices to your Mac, it is primarily used when adding a new SCSI device. Pretty cool. Alright, let's uh, back this up. Is this a uh, high density? Well, whatever. We'll, we'll use, uh, use this. Yeah, there's, there's a certain version of Windows 2000 server. I think it's release 4. That there's an option that you can you can want uh, you could you could plug some of those things in phone neck connectors I have phone neck connectors I got Apple's equivalent right here where where'd the cable go I got part of it where did where's the here it is here's Apple's version these are their local talk connectors so yeah I have this is actually for Macintosh Plus or an original Mac, but yeah, I have the I have the Farallon phone net connectors. I'm doing a video about Apple Talk and Local Talk because people mix those up. Apple Talk is the protocol. Local Talk is just Apple's connection, but they they swap those terms around sometimes. Phone net is great. I, I love phone net. It's slow, but it works. 
rumor has it that Apple actually used PhoneNet internally because it was cheaper to set up than their own system. And this actually has a serial number uh, right there. So I'm going to have to type that in here to save it so we don't lose track of it. and organized here. We currently have 26 megs of backed up stuff. No. So, Tom, you cannot use two phone net or local talk adapters to extend a serial cable to an image writer 2 unless that image writer 2 has a local talk card installed in it. Otherwise, the data being sent through those transceiver boxes is going to get screwed up. Trust me, I tried. Uh, I did that live once, it just did not work, and the reason is that it's sending local talk signals if it's going through that or whatever it's doing, it's messing it up. So you cannot use phone net or local talk adapters to extend a simple serial device. It's, it's not going to work correctly. Uh, there were extension cords for image writers. I actually have one uh, right here. Uh, let me undo the zip tie here. So it's just uh, your standard DB8 on the side, and I have a little female jack here. So this is what's plugged into the back of my image writer. So this actually goes out a few feet, so I can plug this into an adapter or something else. So these are just standard cables. I'm sure you can still find some of them around today. Uh, it's not an Apple one, but it's just a regular pinout. Uh, these are nice extension cables. Uh, let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. Must have missed some of that. What's this here? Yeah, um, no one, I think, in their right mind is going to buy a Mac Classic with a missing CRT for $3,000. That is crazy. There are expansion cards for the image writers. Yes, sorry, I read that wrong. Yes, there's a memory expansion card that was mostly useful for the Apple II. Uh, and there's an Apple Talk Local Talk expansion card, which I, I have one. I'm going to install one in my image writer too. Uh, and that allows that printer to be uh, just work, working on a network, which is great. <laughs> no worries, Tom. Well, Nick, that's nice that you had a positive experience with him. Unfortunately, I've heard of people who have had terrible experiences with, with him. Uh, which, unfortunately, like, they paid so much money for a computer that wasn't recapped, and they ended up having to pay to get the thing recapped, which is very obnoxious, if, if, if uh, I may say so myself. Look, I understand these things are used, and they're not in the best condition, but if you're going to sell something that is at a premium price, and it's going to have issues, you may as well disclose that. I mean, that's it's just my opinion. I, I don't know the guy. I'm just saying it's pretty shady for any seller to do. I mean, yes, it's on the buyer to make that decision, too, but just be upfront with that. Yeah, you could you could do a phone net network on uh, laser jet printers, too. Uh, this is a 603 or 602 processor, I believe. I don't think... I don't think there's a system profiler on here, is there? Nope. Yeah. So uh, I forget. I forget the exact CPU, but it's either it's a 180 megahertz. So that must be a 602e or 603. I am. I, I took the day off work. Yep. Long weekend. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not saying he's a he's a bad guy or he he can't be nice or anything, Nick. I'm I'm just saying I've I've heard un, unfortunate things from individuals who purchase things from them who have either reached out to me or some of my friends uh, because they purchased something from him and it wasn't working or they needed something soldered or recapped or whatever. So that, that's all I'm saying. Um, all right, so this clip art disc did not want to work. Uh, we have Teletype Setting Program Deluxe, T-Script, The Smooth Performer. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> uh, all right, let's, let's see what that's all about. I don't think this will like the disc, folks. It's struggling. <laughs> I don't think it's going to like this one. It's not popping up right away. Got 34 people watching. Hello, everybody. Thank you for watching. Hey, the disc actually read. Uh, let's see. This is wow. That disc is packed. Uh, we have uh, some some font stuff, I guess. Um, yeah, let, let's make an image of this. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate it. Yeah, let me uh, let me share this little guy here. Oh. This is a very handy adapter. Ah, this is a very handy adapter. Uh, let me switch the camera here. This is a Keyspan serial adapter. It's a, like a, uh, I believe it's called a twin serial adapter. And it takes a USB port and it actually gives you two of the old style Apple serial mini eight din, uh, eight pin ports, which is very nice. Uh, so you get two of those. And so this is very handy if you're connected to like a, an old image writer printer or something like that. Now this, I don't believe supports Apple talk. Um, so you're gonna have to just use uh, you know standard serial on this. Uh, maybe it does. I forget. Some of these are very picky and they do not. Uh, but this is a USB one. The model number is USA-28XB. So USA-28XB. Uh, I actually saw one of these brand new in the box in New York. Uh, but uh, they don't ship. <laughs> so I wasn't about to drive out there, pay tolls for much, was much more than the device just to pick it up. But uh, yeah, very, very handy little devices. I have one of these. Um, and there is another one. Yeah, I showed, I showed these off in my iMac video. Uh, this is one by CompU Cable. It's a mini geo port. So very, very similar thing. You have a USB cable on one end and you have two uh, serial ports on the other. Pretty much work the same way. Uh, this actually has uh, an extra pin so it will work with your geo port modems and stuff like that. Uh, very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to print to old devices and stuff like that. So I'll put that to the side. All right, so that disc does not want to be read. See what this is. Stylist. I have no idea what that is. Let's uh let's image it. Oops. Sometimes I'm just too quick clicking around. Oh, I'm not showing uh, the screen. I forgot to switch back. Oopsie. He didn't miss much. Well, 
let's let's see what different patterns we got in here. Let's see. <laughs> wow. Some of these will wake your eyes up in the morning, I can tell you that. These are not standard. These just came with the power computing machine, I believe. Someone had fun with Photoshop, I bet you. <laughs> oh, who would want that? These just keep getting worse and worse. All right, these are these are the classic Mac OS ones. These are pretty neat. I always like the computer chip one. This I always thought looked very realistic. <laughs> Same with the grass. Ah, the teddy bears. Where's the computer chip one? There we go. I always like this one. Oh, yeah, those image find uh, books. Yep. <laughs> I think I'll leave it on this for a while. I don't know. I like I like the power computing one. But I also I also like I also like this. What which one should I use? Should I use the chips or should I use the power computing logo? I'll let you guys decide. Decide the fate of the desktop wallpaper. This was just obnoxious. <laughs> I kind of like this one because it's just so loud and annoying. Oh, the kitties are good. I always forgot about the kitties. Well, I didn't forget about the kitties, but there we go. Kitties! Kitty cats! It does look like a Pepsi wallpaper. <laughs> I'll leave the chips for now. We can always change it. Let's see. So we've, we've been doing this for about an hour or so. Um, let's see. Do I have anything interesting on here? Oh, this, this was from a recovered hard drive. It had like a bunch of games and stuff on here. Who wants to be a millionaire? I'm not about to be opening this stuff up live. <laughs> oh, so I already, yeah, I already imaged some hard drives on here. You can see some of these hard drives are already backed up. Mac 2. I didn't have a Mac 2 hard drive. Unless that's the 2CX. Which one's this one? Oh, that, that's the SCSI 2SD uh, partition. Okay. Ah, eWorld. Somebody actually... So eWorld was Apple's, like, AOL type stuff. Um, that... That... Uh, that... That basically it was, like, their AOL internet connectivity thing. And so someone actually set up an eWorld server so you can actually log into it again. I think that's pretty cool. It's, it's not the full thing, but it's pretty neat. Can you run PC on this supercomputing or your performer? If if you have a PC compatibility card, you can. I do have two of those. I have one for a PCI computer, like this one, and I have one for um, uh, a 6100. 
but uh, yeah, I don't, I don't uh, have those installed. Yes, Applefruit is BBS. That's what it is. It's really neat. I have to, I have to play around with that. Oh, these are good. Apple spec databases. Yeah, let's let's look at this. Take a little break from imaging disks. If you don't mind. So this is a pretty cool application. What it will do is it will uh, open up these spec database files, which is pretty cool. Hey, Steven. Hey, Jordan. So uh, we were going through and just imaging a, a stack of, of floppy disks that we were uh, just had laying around. So we've been doing that for the past hour or so. Uh, I just was looking on the hard drive and found I had this Apple spec database application. Uh, so we have the computer output put in through a uh, capture device thingy. So that's what we're doing here. Yeah, Kevin, I, I knew about the AIM one, but uh, yeah, the E-World one was pretty new to me. Uh, I would do a Google search, Aaron, just Apple Fritter. They're a very popular Apple website. Uh, just Google search Apple Fritter and E-World. You should be able to find the information you're looking for. All right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, so this allows us to basically look up specs on systems. Uh, so you could do comparisons, reports, and stuff like that. So we have uh, like the 128K here, gives us all the information we would ever want to know on a 128K, which is pretty cool. Oh, and FYI, anybody who joins a stream, whether it's this stream or another stream, I always put something in the video description that explains what we're doing today. So if you ever join late or whatever and you want to catch up, that's a good place to start. All right, so yep, this is uh, introduced January 84, discontinued October 85. Let's see what the last machine it had at the time of this this publication here. Ah, uh, network server. Yeah, so th those weren't discontinued yet. Workgroup server 9150. Workgroup server 95. Duo Doc 2. Ah, uh, the 550C. Beautiful. Exclusive to Japan, but I wish I had one of those. Now let's open up, uh, let's go to the 270C, the Duo 270C. This is a cool one. I love this machine. Yeah, it is like an offline every Mac. Uh, I have a few uh, Newton devices. I have an E-Mate, which is sitting right here. This is a, an E-Mate Newton device. Pretty cool. Uh, I also have a uh, Newton Message Pad 130 and a 2100. Okay. Yes, let's see. Uh, system, power, video. Yes, yeah, so you can organize a lot of different things. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so let's open up one of these. Print report. We're not going to be doing that. Oh, that's cool. It'll tell you what uh, supported macOS software is on there. You can zoom in, zoom out. Let's see, go to displays. We can look at all the different monitors. That's pretty cool. I have a 270C that I got an external floppy drive and a micro dock for after owning it for 10 years. Oh, very cool. Uh, Apple fritter is one word, Aaron. Try that. <laughs> one word, no space. Yeah, there, there's a few emates on eBay I saw recently.
Yeah, a lot of websites have bloat, Steven, so I think that's why this, this just loads up very quickly. Of course, it was designed for this as well. That's awesome that you can get software on there. The, the one thing that I, I would say, uh, if you do have another Macintosh, Tom, another classic Mac, um, you could use just a standard serial cable or some local talk cables to build an Apple Talk network uh, with your Duo. So assuming that PowerBook Duo had a, a live hard drive that worked fine, you could do a little Apple Talk network and transfer files to it. That's that's what I did back in the day because I, I had the floppy drive, but I had something that was like two megabytes and I couldn't compress it. It was like a video. And it was a, I think it was a quick time video for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time for the Nintendo 64. And I had a color... PowerBook 270C, and I'm like, oh, I want to see how it works, and I loaded that QuickTime file. It was like maybe seven megabytes over the network, and it took forever, but it worked, so. <laughs> All right, what else we got here? Uh, yeah, we got some monitors, printers. Here we go. Now, I recently remembered that the ImageWriter LQ is something that exists, and now I want one. I want one pretty badly. It's just it's just an image writer too, but it's a wider one. And they look beautiful. I really want one. So if anybody <laughs> if anybody has an image writer LQ, uh, that might that might be something I'm interested in. They're they're stupid big and they're gonna be a pain to ship, but uh, Aaron, I'll put something in Discord later. Uh, I remember it was on a forum. It was on one of their forums. Okay, uh, let's see. What's about image? What details can we get on the image writer too? Anything? I can't double click it. That's annoying. I guess it doesn't really have a lot of information on them. That's sad. Uh, let's see. We could sort things by storage, so you can see how much storage those had. Uh, by memory. So memory speed, that's good to know. Neat. Alright, so that's basically what this is. But it was made with FileMaker. Interesting. I know some of us still use FileMaker today. It's pretty cool. Uh, oh, you know what? I have some cool CDs here. Now, I put these on my Patreon blog. Not this one. Hold on. Uh, these are Apple Resource Library CDs. Let me uh, move the camera real quick. So, what, what these are is they were basically uh, sent out to people who, I don't know, did uh, Apple programs. They were resellers or salesmen or whatever. Uh, and these CDs contain a lot of, you know, updates and internal information, ads, flyers, stuff like that. So let's look at a few of them. These are two. I have archived these. They are on my Patreon blog. I think I made a public post, so they are freely available. Um, I will be putting them on the uh, Macintosh Garden site soon, and I do have more of them to share also. Did these older Macs have a dedicated GPU, or did that come later? Well, there was, there's a video chip on it. I wouldn't say it's a dedicated GPU. I think this actually has some ATI chipset on it, but it's, it's nothing too fancy. Uh, this is a, a Power Computing clone, Power Center Pro 180. Yep. All right, and uh, yeah, let me, let me put one of these discs in. So we have August 1998. So it says two CDs on it. Uh, it actually has a little index sheet, so I'm going to... Uh, you know what? They are kind of hard to find because a lot of people just toss them out. I I paid probably like $20 for each of these. There was some crazy dude selling them on eBay, a whole binder of them. He wanted like $400 for them. But I think that's just crazy. All right, let's see what's inside here. Uh, we got a bunch of software. Uh, we got some WWDC videos, which I'm not going to play because I will get copyright strikes. It happened before. <laughs> so this is an iMac uh, versus a Pentium Dual, which is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, this this looks like it's just software. Well, let's put it in anyway. Let's see. 
Let's see if there's anything good in there. Now this CD drive is a little slow sometimes. Uh, a lot of people did digitize those already. There's an Apple archive on YouTube that has a lot of good, that good stuff, Steven. Uh, I don't know how they get away with it, because I played the intro to Tiger and I got a copyright strike. Uh, I don't think it does, but that's probably on one of these discs, is Phil's, Phil jumping off uh, with the iBook to show that the hard drive is, you know, okay. <laughs> oh, so we have an Index app here. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Okay. Complete data sheet. Ooh, a quick time VR demo. Cool. Ooh. We could look at an iMac. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Oh, I forgot to switch it back. I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> I like that. That's pretty neat. Hyper Studio. Wee! <laughs> yeah, that was on. I, I believe the Bare Naked Ladies uh, uh, band had a live. Uh, I'm sorry, a music video on the macOS 8 CD ROM. I believe that's where it was from. They were showing off QuickTime. That's very cool, Space Explorer. I think I've heard you mention that before. I have to, to take a look at that. What is this? Loading something. Okay, yeah, Tom, you may be correct on that. That, that would make sense. Press any key to start. Getting fancy here. <laughs> I like this. Hopefully I don't get a content strike for the music that's playing. La 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 la. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> I love it. I love that ad. Ha! That is great. Hey, Brian! <laughs> Yes, you did. I think you did pick up a lot of those computers. <laughs> oh, boy. How you doing, Brian? Hope you're doing well. Mac OS software guide. Marketing info. Apple facts. These are good because a lot of these, these books are hard to find. The Apple Advantage. Desktop system accessories. Oh, that stinks, Nick. Hopefully they find it. I had that happen to me and eventually it showed up. Ah, uh, Macintosh server. Ooh, that one, that one's a good one. Ah, uh, look at that. That's pretty. 
That's pretty. That's one of my favorite Macs. What else we got? Maybe this needs a newer version of QuickTime than what I have. I made it angry. Oh, yeah, I think I need a new version of QuickTime. USB sales presentation? I, I do, I do. I do need to set that up. Wait a second, I want to look at this. That's a really cool graph right there. That's pretty neat. Oh yeah, I always love Fireware. Hey, there's the super disk drive we were talking about. RDA infrared. <laughs> yeah, don't plug your hub into the keyboard, folks. Hey, I have one of those. It looks a little different. It's a different, slightly different model, but very cool. Hey, this is pretty neat. Power Macintosh G3 all-in-one versus an iMac computer. This is a very interesting topic. That's because that 68K software probably does not like the operating system that you're using. Some of that software can be very picky. Yeah, so the old one, one was actually faster than the iMac, actually. Had more ports, more expansion, obviously. But it, it was more expensive. It was bigger. <laughs> I do like that it had the zip drive there. Yeah, video in and out for VCR, video mirroring. <laughs> you can hardly read this text. It's so pixelated. It's not my captured box. Speed.
No, do not put cassette tapes into a PowerBook Duo Dock. Do not put anything into a Duo Dock other than the PowerBook itself. Simplicity. That's interesting that the uh, the all-in-one G3 only had 10 base inter Ethernet. I guess you could use one of your PCI cards to upgrade it. But you were there in person. That's cool. I was I was only uh, there for the 2001, 2002, and 2003 Mac worlds. But Apple didn't really have a big presence in the. Oh no, maybe maybe it was 2002, 2003. Maybe I have to I have to look. I have my badges from somewhere. It was the early 2000s. That's all I remember. But that's really cool. Uh, the Apple spec database software, I would check Macintosh Garden. Um, that's probably where I got it from, to be honest. <laughs> All right, Nick, don't don't go breaking your things. Nice tech and music. That's cool. Yeah, so there, there's the price points. So obviously the, the all-in-one G3 was more powerful and better expandability and flexibility and all that stuff, but more expensive. Pretty neat. PowerBook G3 sales presentation. Oh, that's a pretty computer. 292 megahertz. <laughs> you, you know Apple was so upset that they couldn't get to 300. <laughs> Three different screen sizes. That's a pricey computer right there. Oh, thank you, Jay. Yep, that's that's right. I did do two videos on the iMac. I'm very proud of um, the one that Jay is mentioning. Thank you very much, Jay. That's very kind of you. And uh, an earlier one that I did. What are the graphics for the PowerBook? I believe it's the same ATI um, 2 uh, system. No, it might yet. Yeah, it's probably not. It just says 2 megabytes or 4 megabytes of video memory. So, But thank you, Jay. That's very kind of you to, to plug my own videos there. Jay has some cool stuff, too. If you haven't subscribed to the House of Moth, click on his username there. He has some great videos. Very, very in-depth videos about repairing some more modern stuff than I handle, but very cool. Oh, that's a shame, Tom. Hopefully they went to a good place. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we'll be running Unreal on a PowerBook like this. All right, let's, let's put in the other disc here. Ah. Hope I'm not boring you all. Let's put in disc two. I think this just has videos on it. Performance demo files, what's this? Oh, okay. So at WWDC, this is really cool. So at WWDC, thank you, Jay. I always appreciate that. At WWDC um, and at these other conferences, they did comparisons with a Mac and a PC, and they launched these these demos showing you how fast the G3 was compared to a PC. And these are actually the demo files, folks. So uh, technically, I had a PC here. Uh, I could open up one of these, and I could follow these instructions here. Uh, I could do a PC ver uh, demo, I could fire it up, uh, and I could uh, take one of these uh, performance files and demo files or whatever, and I could run the same stuff, which is really cool. So, this is really neat. Uh, let's see, uh, WWDC demos for After Effects CG3 launch, uh, okay. Let's see what we got here. OK. 
Okay. Thank you, Glenn. So I need a compact professional workstation. <laughs> I don't got one of those. This is basically how to start those uh, those demos. Let's see what this is. Oh, go away, please. <laughs> what are you do? <laughs> Stop. So this is a uh, performance. That's pretty neat. Yes, the office assistant haunts us, even though if it's a friendly looking Mac. Yeah, I don't see that what you're talking about, Jay, but uh, I it's it's hard for me because I'm not like staring at the screen. It's like such a little window, it's hard for me to tell, but if it looks cool, it looks cool. That's good. <laughs> um, let, me, let me just open up one of these. I'm just curious. Let's copy this to our desktop. I don't know what it is. We'll find out. Yeah, and until I started this stream, I had a CRT on top of here. But what I was actually doing was using... Uh, microphone's right here. Sorry. I was actually using uh, this screen here because it has two inputs. But uh, I dragged this one off of the, the shelf in the closet and figured I'd use that one to make it easier. Oh, that's cool. Ooh, we have a graphic. I love finding this stuff because I could use it in my videos. Ah, <laughs> oh, it didn't open it. Uh, let's see. What else could open a picked file? No, not Apple Works. Picture viewer, that should be. Okay, so I need I need to reinstall QuickTime. That's what I need. I wonder if that's on the CD here. That should be on the CD. Maybe they just assume you have the software. They probably do. That's cool. Oh, I love this. So this is what they showed on stage. This is really neat. So you got a high res version of this. Oh, that is cool. <laughs> oh, I want to watch that again. That is awesome. Oh, man. I love that. <laughs> oh, I'm not dissing QuickTime. I absolutely love it. I love QuickTime. Oh, I'm a huge defender of QuickTime. But uh, 
I just need to reinstall the software. <laughs> no likey. Oh boy. I think I need to install a new version of QuickTime on this computer. What do you think? There you go, QuickTime 4. So QuickTime Musical Instruments is uh, extensions, I believe, to interface with MIDI files. <laughs> no worries, Scarlet Swordfish. Thanks for dropping by. See you later. I got a reboot. All right. Second reboot. All right, well, this reboots, I'm going to take a little refreshing break. I will be right back. Right, we are back. <laughs> yeah, there were some, there were, there were actually some problems with uh, AOL, uh, the first versions of AOL that were included on the iMac. You actually had to, to redo, uh, I remember my aunt had an iMac, um, it was, I think the iMac DVs around that era, there was a, a problem with the iMac where they had a problem. And, uh, it was just the AWOL software had a bug in it, and it would crash, so you had to update it. Which, you couldn't really update unless you got a CD in the mail or something like that. And yes, I have a cookie. My wife made cookies. They are yummy. I'm going to eat the cookie. Um, let's see. Let's catch up on the chat. Yes, I have returned from my quest. 
So I installed QuickTime because I want to see if um, if I could open some of those other files. It's a chocolate chip cookie. Oh. Why, thank you for that very kind comment. Yay, it opens up. Oh, that brushed metal. <laughs> Struggling to read from the CD. <laughs> Did you freeze up? Oh, come on. I just installed QuickTime 4 and it froze up. I do remember that. There we go. I'm not going to play the audio, but... Yeah, so this, they were doing those demos, and so these are the demo files that are on the disk, actually, which is pretty neat. <laughs> A little snail. <laughs> Eat the cookie already. Okay. Mmm. That's a good cookie. The audience agrees. It's a good cookie. <laughs> no, that would be if that would be if I ate the cookie like right next to the microphone. <laughs> All right, what were we doing? I forgot. I'm busy eating a cookie. Forget what I'm doing here. Um, let's see. My QuickTime 4 is definitely much slower on this machine than I anticipated. Especially the seek times of this poor CD drive. Ooh, Mac OS 8. Let's see what's on that other CD. After this one decides to wake up. There we go. Oh, thank you, Greg. Thank you for the, another super chat. Eep! Mmm, <laughs> cookies. <laughs> Come on over. We'll make, we'll make you some. Thank you very much, Greg. That's very kind. And that dog almost looks like one of your dogs. Although maybe that looks like a fox. I don't know. I don't know what that sticker is supposed to be. But it's, it's adorable, nonetheless. All right. So this has, uh, ooh, the iMac Colors commercial. Mac OS X server fact sheet. Ooh, this is this is a good one. So that's from February 1999. Karate Fox. Ah. Macworld keynote speech. That's pretty cool. Apple's commitment to gaming. Oh, how times have changed. Yes, Jay. I think this is one of the discs you were drooling over.
It's, it's just skipping because that CD drive is not the fastest. <laughs> I'm afraid I can't do that, Dave. Uh, let's see. Uh, Sorsen, Soren Sun video codec, whatever that is. Looks better than some of the ones I've seen on YouTube, I'll tell you that. It didn't, it didn't freeze too bad. It just froze for a second. I remember watching that. Let, let's see it again. I remember playing that when that came out. Sorry, I'm eating a cookie. Yeah, there we go. Oh, very cool. Thank you for the link, Rudy. I will uh, catch up on reading that later. I'm going to open that link up in a new tab. Thank you. Yeah, so uh, Virtual Game Machine was pretty interesting. So, uh, you know, Apple did have some Macs, Mac games, obviously, that they had, um, you know, through their developers and such. But, yeah, Virtual Game Station was an emulator to play PlayStation 1 games on your Macintosh. That's what it was. Oh, I remember that. I remember downloading that. I didn't download that trailer. My father downloaded that trailer at work and put it on a zip disk and brought it home. I remember watching that. <laughs> no, what I'll probably do is take a break and then stream again later. Who knows? Yeah, Tron Sony uh, sued Connectix. Uh, there's a whole battle behind that. There's a good YouTube video, I think, online about it, but... Yep, here's a... Sony PlayStation title shipping today. And with all the same kind of great I think it freezes here. Or maybe before... Yeah, that's, that's where it freezes. Just for a little bit. Probably just accessing the CD drive, to be honest. Really cool, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Halo was supposed to be a Mac exclusive before Microsoft bought out Bungie, unfortunately. <laughs> we are totally committing to making the Macintosh a game platform. I mean, the Rage 128 chip was a great move by Apple, but... Ugh, jeez. I mean, so many times Apple has done during a keynote, they would mention, um, you know, their focus was on games. I remember it was a few years after the switch to Intel, I think, they had a game thing also. They were talking about, um, uh, I think it was... Um, Castle, Return to Castle Wolfenstein behind enemy territory or something like that. And they're like, Apple is making a commitment to games, and nothing really ever happened. Oh, yeah, I remember Bleem. So that's that. Um, Jay left, so he's going to miss one of his favorite commercials. <laughs> I'm not playing the audio, but you probably actually still hear that. Lower that. Hmm. 
<laughs> I don't think that was the price of the computer. I think that was how many were sold, Trina. <laughs> oh, I love this machine. It's beautiful. On uh, the colors commercial. Definitely got to mute the music to this. Unfortunately, great song. Great commercial. Very cool. Beautiful machines. I have one of every color. Except the blueberry tray loading. I do not have a blueberry tray loader. I have a grape, a, a Bondi blue, a, key, a, a lime, a tangerine, and a strawberry. But I do not have a blueberry tray loader. I do have a blueberry DV slot load one. Mac OS 10 fact sheet. How about that? Ah. There's a lot of things that need to be reinstalled on this machine. I know you have one in the box, Greg. I pet it very nicely as we put it back into the box when we were cleaning out Mike's place. <laughs> I should have put it like a note in there for you to find. <laughs> Requirements. Macintosh G3, 64 megs of RAM with one gigabyte of hard disk. Apple Studio Displays, FAQ. Uh, this was an Apple introduced the 15 inch flat panel and the 17 inch and the 21 inch studio displays that matched uh, the, the new blue and white tower. Very cool. Merchandising letter. iMac shells for display use. Do you see this? That's pretty cool. A flower configuration or in a straight line. Please do not alter the color arrangement. <laughs> Yeah, so the IMAX were in so much demand and so expensive that they, they did not want to, I guess, have all of them out for show, but they would have the plastic cases travel around or be on display. That's pretty cool. Yeah, my dad had a 21-inch display. Pretty neat. Unfortunately, it died like a lot of them did. That is pretty cool. Acrobat 3. Yes, yeah, so these are utilities to help run the, the demos and stuff that are on the discs. I don't I don't remember seeing iMac shells in IKEA, but I I could be wrong. I remember seeing the CRT TV shells and all that other stuff, but I never remember seeing Apple stuff, but I just maybe was never there when I when I saw it. But uh, interesting. Interesting. Alright, let's see what's on the other disc here. I'm running out of discs to show. Not that I, I'm running out of floppies, but... Um, let's see what else I got here. There's, let's see what's on the other disc here before we put it in. Now, just... Uh, developer stuff that I don't think would be too interesting. It's a sales, power sales disc. Whoopsie. Good thing that one's backed up. <laughs> Alright, we'll put the disc in just for the heck of it. Hope you guys are all doing well today. We've been here for about uh, 
two hours and 15 minutes. So I think three hours will be the cutoff today because I have some other things I'd like to get done today. Oh boy, what is here? I have no idea. Uh, sure. <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> this is so 90s. I love it. Uh, eight hours, you say? Yes. <laughs> you should settle with 12. Oh, don't give me ideas, Christian, please. Hours? You guys kidding me? It's my day off. I'm not gonna spend the whole time here. I have other things I gotta do, like sleep and eat and clean up. <laughs> uh, like I said, I'm gonna be archiving all these discs. Uh, so if this stuff isn't on YouTube, at least somebody will be able to download the disc images and open up the QuickTime files. Ah, that's pretty neat. So, I'm going to eject that. Maybe we should do some printing. Do some printing? We could do some printing. Oh, yeah. You always had options for QuickTime or uh, Real Player. Or Windows Media Player. <laughs> if I start printing, that'll wake everybody up because that thing is loud. It's a little loud. Oh boy. Alright, let's see. Um anything fun we could do here. How much would you pay for the image writer two? I have five of them. I don't need to pay for an image writer too. Uh, I would maximum pay maybe twenty dollars for one if it was in good condition. Um, that's that's probably the maximum it's worth to me. Again, if somebody doesn't have one and they really want one, that's a different story. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, peer pressure. I actually got something. Uh, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm wondering if I should install it here while everybody's here. You know what, I might. Let, let's, one second here, let me uh, run upstairs. Uh, I will be right back.
So, alright, see you, Space Explorer. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, so, what I decided to, uh, to do a while back is I purchased um, an expansion card for my Apple Image Writer 2. And that was this uh, Apple Image Writer uh, Local Talk card. And so it's this Apple Talk Local Talk option. And this is sealed in the box. I'm not, I don't think I'm going to open this because it's beautiful. Um, it is sealed in the box. It's beautiful. Look how pretty it is. Um, it's in very good condition. I think I'm going to keep this one in the box. Do an Icewind Dale playthrough. I'll, maybe I'll download that. Let's see. But thank you very much, Christian. Eep! <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, the reason I'm not going to open this is, whoops, almost dropped it there. The reason I'm not, not going to open this is um, it, it's really neat in the box. It's still in its original shrink wrap. I opened the uh, Apple Talk card I had for PCs that was still in the box, and I kind of regret it. Um, but I just got one that's not sealed in the box. So I don't need to open this one anymore because I got one for a very fair price. Um, so maybe we'll install this in our printer. So I'm going to put this back on the shelf where I can't hurt it. And then maybe we'll create an Apple Talk network because we're, we're crazy here. How about that? So let me put this back. This back, rather. I'll be back in one minute. Okay, so again, Christian, thank you very much for the super chat. Eep! <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of what, how we can set up this printer here. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. Um, wait, let me clean some of these cables up here because it, it's a little messy. So, um, <laughs> we're going to play half of this stuff. Let's play to return to Castle Wolfenstein enemy territory soon. That sounds like an excellent idea. I don't think I've ever played that game besides the demo, and that was a long time ago. But thank you very much, Greg, for the super chat. Eep! Uh, I greatly appreciate it. That's very, very kind of you and Christian for your super chats. Thank you. So, um, yeah, I got to tidy up a little bit here. But that does sound like fun. We should totally do that. I know you were saying you had some trouble setting up a server. I'm pretty sure we could figure it out if we put our heads together. Might be able to come up with a solution to that, because that would be fun. All right, so what we're going to need to do is set up an Apple Talk network if we're going to print to this image writer here, because let me, uh, I, have, I have an extra chair over here. Ah, let me get this chair out of the way. out of the way um actually you know what let me um let me move some things around this desk so i can point the camera at the printer so you can actually see what i'm doing the, the chat has gone a little quiet hopefully you guys are still still tolerating me there but uh got about 20 people or so and uh, we're going to do some printing if that's okay, if, uh, if we're all okay with that. Good. Still watching. All right, cool. Sometimes YouTube just gets a little wonky and it cuts out, so just wanted to make sure that wasn't the case. All right, so let's, let's point the camera right next to the microphone. It's not going to help us. Let's move that microphone there. You can see my mess of a desk. You can also see the beautiful printer that's sitting there. You are good with printing. Cool. 
just busy watching the stream. That's fine. Don't worry. Nobody has to respond right away. I'm just, I, sometimes YouTube gets a little cranky. So, super focused. Awesome. Right, let's get some of this garbage out over here. See, I have a keyboard tray for both of these machines here. <laughs> oh, don't worry. This printer works beautifully, so we don't got to worry about that. In fact, uh, let's see. Let me, I'm just making sure all my wires are here. This one's going there. This one's going there. So this printer here uh, does not have uh, anything fancy installed except for an extra memory card. Oh, these these are these are my uh, these are my other machines that I just have hanging around here. So we'll give you a bit of a tour. So uh, yeah, we have uh, a Quadro six hundred five. We have a Macintosh two SI here. Uh, below here we have our Emate. Uh, we have a Performa four hundred, and we have a Macintosh LC two. Uh, here we have a logic board. That uh, needs to be uh, used for parts because that is damaged, unfortunately. And uh, let's see what else we got here. This is, I believe, is an LC3 right up here uh, with the network card in it, and our Emate that we uh, showed off before. Uh, below is an Oki Data printer that my friend gave me to try and fix up. So that's what it's doing down there. And uh, here's a better look at the the Mac clone here that we've been using this entire time. And yes, those are some speakers for an iMac G4. <laughs> no, this, this printer has been very reliable, thankfully. Uh, which is why it's been sitting right here on this shelf. Because this is the paper, Trina, that you might recognize. Um, but yeah, I print out all my little certificates here. I print out some fun stuff here. And actually, below this, I have uh, two Performa machines. These are, these are machines that are in uh, various states of repair. So, uh, they are just hanging out there. But, uh, I love this desk. I got this desk from a thrift store. Uh, and it's beautifully set up for a computer and a printer. We got the keyboard tray here. Uh, we got a big desktop cut out there. That's a 2009 Mac Pro tower that's sitting there. Uh, we have a, a G4 AGP tower sitting there. With a bunch of crap on the desk, but, yeah. Uh, yes, so with the Apple Talk card, that is the whole idea behind it. It allows you to plug this printer into multiple computers. Now, technically, you can use a computer as an Apple Talk server. So I could use this computer over here, and what I could do is I can have this computer share that printer over the network. Uh, but this Apple Talk card allows this printer to do that by itself without any other computers being on, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I mean, they used to have printer trays all the time. So when I saw this, I, I picked it up immediately. I'm like, this is cool. I got to have this. So, um, yeah, this this one I got from a friend of mine uh, in 2017. This this came with a bunch of Apple II stuff. And it works It works fantastically. So I'm going to put this camera back on the tripod here. Uh, back on the table, rather. And um, I'm going to be, uh, be doing some tests. See if the tripod wants to wants to sit okay, maybe. I'm wearing shorts, so I do have pants on. For those of you wondering. Okay, let's <laughs> let's uh, get back to the system here so I can show you how we're gonna gonna set this up. So um, make sure we have a, a printer cable plugged into the back of the machine. And we do, uh, and I'm just going to plug this in. I have an extension cord here, uh, so this just makes it easier to unplug and plug things into the back of the printer. And uh, let's uh, let's let's see what we got here. Uh, before I install anything into this printer, and I actually might install it in a different printer because I have a different card set up in this printer right now. Um, let me just set up the camera a little bit easier. Uh, move my little wireless keyboard here. Sorry, just adjusting things here. All right. So that's our that's our printer there, and uh, it's going to be a little noisy, but it'll work. 
<laughs> Yay, congrats. It's always good when you get to sell some stuff. That's that's very cool. I think the the battery in my mouse is uh is uh dying. Yeah, it is. Oopsie. That's I, I bought this mouse years ago. I need one new battery. Hold on, let me go grab a new battery. Hold on, just looking for a spare battery. Oh, your battery's here. I don't know if they, they have a good charge on them, but we'll see. Yeah, there we go. That'll work fine. So I'm using this uh, this wireless trackball, which I like pretty much. It's, it's, it's uh, a nice little Logitech one. Uh, and the, this is a, a model M570. It's wireless, has a little dongle, works great. But the battery was dying, and that battery lasted like two years. That's not bad. Okay. All right, cool. So, um, interesting thing about this printer, if you turn it on a certain way, it'll do a printer test. So I'll demonstrate that. So for any of you who find one of these printers at a thrift store, even if it has a ribbon in there and you're, you're questionable about whether it works or not, but it does turn on, um, sometimes you will not get uh, a green light. You'll get an error light if there's no paper in these things. But if you have a piece of paper, uh, turn the power off, put the piece of paper in, uh, and you could hold this form feed button and the power button, and it'll do a printer test. And to stop the test, you just turn off the printer because it'll just go on forever. But give you an example of what that looks like so at the top there it'll give you um, the ROM version if this wants to focus there this is ROM version uh, revision number five uh, and it will you know spit out a bunch of little information there which is is pretty neat so that's good to good to know to have a little test uh, uh, test thing built into those printers in case you're ever in the the mood to buy one and you want to test it Oh, good luck with repairing that. Yeah, that that's uh, an interesting problem to have. So, uh, what I'm going to do is... Um, I don't care what I'm printing on, really. So, I'm just pulling that back. And I'm just going to do a, a simple test from this Macintosh to make sure we can print to this printer. How about that? So, I'm going to go to Chooser, because this is how you select a printer on the early Macintosh systems. I'm going to select Image Writer. I'm going to select the port that the uh, printer is plugged into. I'm going to double check physically where it's plugged in. I have to go around the computer. It is indeed plugged into the back of the printer port. So I'm going to select the printer port and close this. So that should be okay. So if I open up a document, uh, one of these and I go to print uh, I'm going to go to the faster speed draft is a little too quick and I'll go to print and we should be able to hear printing let me move the microphone a little bit closer for your listening pleasure now be careful this does get a little loud so you've been warned those of you with headphones may want to be a little careful
successfully. See, I told you this one works. I've used it many times before, so I, I knew I knew that it did work successfully. Hello, Peter. Thank you for joining. All right. So let's take a look at this <laughs> this beautiful print out here. So we have uh, we have the 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 printer test stuff that was just spewing all over the place here, which is not the prettiest thing. It, it's just a bunch of letters and stuff. Um, but you could see uh, what it actually did print was the document that we sent. And that was this Apple... Whoop, let me uh, switch the camera here. Sorry. Still getting the hang of this. There we go. Uh, you'll see it says Apple Tech Step Test and the, the rest of that document that we were trying to print. So that printed successfully, which is nice. And uh, I didn't have any doubts that it would. So... Nice for something to actually work. I know, it's shocking. Very shocking. That is not a bad deal. Which uh, printer did you get, Peter? Was it an image writer or one of the style writers or uh, uh, a non-Apple printer? Uh, I would suggest recapping that machine if you have the ability to do so. We're sending that to somebody to recap right away because those machines, especially the batteries, they could go kablamo. So if you are not comfortable with doing that on yourself, uh, I think you would... Uh, benefit from doing that and prolong the life of your computer. Uh, yeah, so this is tractor feed computer paper. They call it that because it has these little feed holes in the side. Um, yes, you can put normal paper in. In fact, let me get, I have another image writer right here. It was one I got from the recycling center. Let me uh, put that on my lap here and, and uh, show you some things about that printer rather than lifting this one up. So. The reason I'm picking this one up, uh, a Star Rider 2, very cool. I don't think I have a Star Rider 2. The reason I'm picking this one up is this is uh, already a bit damaged and beat up. So if I drop it or if I break it, this is not going to be the end of the world here. Let me just straighten out my tripod. There we go. So, oh boy. Yeah, this is uh, this is an Image Rider 2. Yes, Brian, I... I, I uh, can assume you're going to have some recapping in your in your future there with those compact Macs that you picked up. Uh, looks like we got some paper that got stuck with some tape. There's something something was around here. Either way, um, so this printer does work. I've I've actually uh, tested this on a live stream before. Yeah, the, you have to use some metal shields around the uh, around the uh, the Mac there uh, on the logic board to try and you know keep it from that heat gun. Oh, good, that's great to hear, Peter. Yeah, so um, let me uh, take the uh, top off of this thing here. So we have our. Let me swap this around. Oh boy, yeah, these are much heavier than they look, honestly. So. Let me uh, switch the camera here. Oh, wow. That's great, Brian. I didn't know that. Congrats. And I think the battery on my mouse died again. Ha! <laughs> that's unfortunate. Oh, boy. Well, we're going to... We're just going to keep on trying. Um, just need to swap around the power supply of a good classic and a classic 2. Great. Yeah, the classic 2 is much better than the classic, as you, as you know. Um, but they're very similar machines. But good to have spare parts. Good to have extras. All right. So, um, yeah. This uh, is an interesting little printer. We got your paper feed guide here. And we have a switch here. Now, this switch is if you want to switch between the tractor feed paper and a single sheet of regular paper. And so you remove this back here. Put that over... Here, ah, we're running out of space. Uh, and then there's these little clips here. So these clips, you put the paper like, like so. Let me show you an example. So you take the paper, you take the clips, the uh, these little clips here. You line these up. Let me, let me get the camera a little closer here. You line up these little these little holes here, and you clamp that down. Do a better job of that. And then when I turn this knob here, 
<laughs> on the other side, you'll see that it feeds the printer in. Now this knob is attached to a motor, so it will feed it in automatically, which is nice. Uh, if you do use a single sheet of paper, you do not have to use those tractor holes. And so instead, what you would do, is you would flip this like this, and when you do that, it adjusts these rollers and, and things a little bit. And you just put a regular piece of paper in above these, and it just sucks it right in. But it's only one slice, uh, one piece of paper there, so uh, that's that's all you could do at a time if you're doing that. Um, but yeah, this uh, this printer is uh, work, work, works pretty well. Um, I guess we could upgrade this one. Who, yeah, I guess we could upgrade this one. Why not? Uh, let me um, let me put this over here for a second. Uh, these take ribbon ribbon ink uh, cartridges. So, um, you could still find some new old stock online, especially the black ones. The color ones are becoming much harder to find. Uh, a company called MacFX did make them for a few years. Unfortunately, I didn't buy any. Um, but they, uh, unfortunately ran out of stock because the supplier demanded more money for them. But this is just a regular black imin image. Um, ugh, I can't speak. I'm sorry. This is a black ribbon, just black ink there. Um, this design of the image... Uh, Ryder's chassis and everything and the uh, the engine is what I'm trying to say uh, was not Apple's design so there is uh, you know other printers that use the same exact image uh, image writer type ribbon that you could also get sometimes um, yeah so let's put this back here uh, actually no I was taking that out because we're gonna we're gonna upgrade this thing that's right that's what we're gonna do all right let's take that out put that over there um and what we have to do is we have to unscrew these two screws here, which I think, I think I actually did already. Did I? Yeah, I did. And so we have to slide this all the way to this side. And then we could pick this up. If it lets us. I might need to get a screwdriver. Maybe, there we go. So this comes right up. And you can just sort of hang this here. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to install, if I could find where I put it, ah, where did I put it, where did I put that card? We're going to install that uh, Apple Talk card on this printer. Oh, come on. <laughs> I just had the thing. I was just holding it. Here it is. <laughs> so uh, here's an Apple Talk card, a uh, local talk option, whatever Apple called it. They called it a few different things. And um, bring the camera a little bit closer so you can see uh, what's going on here. So this is just a, a card that gives extra functionality. There's no extra port or anything like that. Um, there's there's just uh, this card that adds that local talk, Apple talk functionality. Uh, I have probably 15 compact Max or more. And as we we're doing that unbot that uh, e-waste video, you saw that a lot of them are probably not going to work. <laughs> so a lot of them are parts. I'd say I, I have about a handful that work, and and all of them need to be recapped at least on the analog board, if not the logic board too. But I, I say this in my streams many times. I got my majority of my collection uh, when these computers were very undesirable, and nobody wanted them. I wish I could go back with the time machine and a wallet full of money <laughs> because nobody wanted those things at all. My how times have changed. Yeah, so the style writers, uh, most of them used either Canon or, or uh, HP uh, inkjet tanks. So you could actually use most Canon ink uh, in a style writer. Hey, Raw Elements, uh, well, we were messing around with some things, and now um, one thing led to another, and we're installing an Apple Talk, Local Talk upgrade card inside of an image writer. Uh, that's a good question, Trina. I don't know. Um, I'll try and figure something out. Let's see. How does this plug in here? And this goes to... Where is this plug in? Oh, is this, this is a grounding thing, huh?
Well, uh, I should read the manual for this, shouldn't I? So this this goes into a slot. This thing right here just plugs into this. Then this plugs in somewhere. Oh, I see. There's a grounding thing here. But there should. Oh, I see. There's another one. Okay. So that's that's pretty self-explanatory. All right. <clears throat> yes, an Image Writer One is a dot matrix printer. If you get the appropriate cable, you can actually use an Image Writer One uh, on uh, a regular Macintosh. And I will try and scoot back because I have one of those cables here. Now this exact cable will probably not work because uh, a lot of these were used on modems. There are two types. There's one that has a, a different pinout than the other. This plugs into your Image Writer One and this will plug in to your your more modern vintage Macintosh. But they are compatible. You just need the physical cable. It's just a different pinout. That's all it is. But it will work. I didn't have the right cable. So I just had to use the, the older cable for the Macintosh 512, uh, 512K I had. But all right, uh, let's uh, install this here. So I'm going to put this in this slot here, which is a little easier said than done. Push that down. And it's a good thing I'm testing this because I just got this from eBay, so I'm going to hope it works. And then we had this little ground thing. There's a little port for that right here. So we're just going to we're just going to attach that this little piece of metal here so we have this ground wire going from here to here there's already a spot there that's being used up by something else on the printer but uh yeah and that's that's what we're doing hey dana it's dana and he's doing stuff how you doing all right so there we go that's how easy it is to install an image writer uh local talk apple talk card into an apple image writer too how about that um Well, raw elements, you uh, can probably get one of those cables or build one. Um, I don't think it'll be too difficult. Just make sure you're not buying a, the modem equivalent of those cables because the pinout sometimes is a little different. But uh, yeah, I think, I think we're all set here. So um, I'm going to put this ribbon back in here. Nope, oh, that did not fit right. Hold, please. There we go. Let's adjust this there. Is that how it's supposed to go? Is it supposed to go over that? Yeah, I think that's it. Yep, that's how it goes. All right, cool. So, whoopsie. So I'm not tightening the screws on this. There's no real real need to do that, especially if we have to reinstall the card or reseed it or anything like that. And <laughs> I put the other piece of plastic. I'm a mess today, aren't I? Here it is. Right in front of me. I can't even see the darn thing. <laughs> well, this, this one... Uh, it looks pretty good. This one is, is in much better condition. The one that's sitting right here is so pretty. These these are my friends. Have you hugged your image writer today? Oh, this thing is so heavy. Jeez. It's like it's it's like an EMAC. Because the EMAC is is lopsided in its weight. The way all the weight is right here. Everything else is light. This is oh jeez. Do some do some reps here. Jeez. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is try to find a spot for this thing. Because um, I wanted to print off of it, but that I'm not moving that one. Um, uh, does the Apple II has got a printer? Uh, the Apple II could plug into an Image Writer or an Image Writer 2. Uh, the Image Writer 2, the manual actually shows the connections for the Apple Lisa. The Apple II, the Apple III, and the Macintosh. It's a very, very versatile printer. This and the Image Writer 1. Ah, this is a uh, power computing machine. And look, Dana, we got fancy video capture. We're doing some printer tests. So this is, uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. This is running System 7.6 with a whopping 212 megabytes of memory. This is a pretty nice setup. 
Yeah. We're being fancy today, Dana. Very fancy. Sorcery. <laughs> Witchcraft. All right, so we're going to... Um... <laughs> he was probably resting. It's okay. It's a Friday. Uh, I'm going to bring over a chair. <laughs> Use that as a desk. Because why not? All right, so let me uh, let me put this down here, and uh, I will be back in a moment with my makeshift uh, chair desk. Make sure not to break any cables or anything as we put this chair down. Oh boy, uh, this is heavy. No worries, Trina. All right, so, oh boy. Yeah, unfortunately, I use up all my TV tray things. Oh boy, uh, someone had a question about a Macintosh TV before, and I apologize, I read it and I did not respond to it. Let me try and scroll up, see if I could find that. Could you ever test your Mac TV like play TV channels? So that was from Nick. Um, apologies to that. Uh, yeah, I'd probably play around with that. The, the problem is the logic board is dead and so is the, uh, the special adapter for the TV tuner. So I'd have to improvise. Yeah, so the Mac Charlie is a very interesting device. If, if you look online, some, some people have some interesting uh, tidbits and, and articles about it. They were advertisements in magazines and stuff. I don't have one. I saw one on eBay. Very expensive. Not something I'm really interested in, in messing around with for that price. Well, that sounds fun, Dana. The Mac X. I don't know. Okay, so, um, sounds familiar. Maybe I'm just not remembering correctly. But, um, yeah, the, the motherboard, the battery exploded and destroyed the logic board. Absolutely destroyed it. Um, the TV tuner adapter is destroyed too. Uh, it's in very bad shape. I can just replace it with an LC logic board, but it's not going to have the TV tuner functionality. So, uh, that's, it's a bit of a, a problem there. But, all right, so let me adjust this tripod here for a bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, find an extension cord uh, for this printer because we need a we need another power cord, and I'm running out of outlets. I don't want to trip a circuit here. So um, give me one moment, uh, and I will I will uh, will be right back. Let me uh, where's the button here? Sorry. Oops, not that one. <laughs> I'm new to this. I apologize. <laughs> Right, I'll be right back in in one minute. Let me just get a cable here. Okay, I found a power cable. I'm just looking to get um, a uh, few other cables. Hey, Brock. Yes, this is WWDC uh, 1996 edition. <laughs>
Okay, almost done here. Just looking for one more dongle. <laughs> yes, this is a very awkward uh, presentation. Oops. Of course, when I need to find the cable, I can't find it. Let me, let me walk over to the other side of the basement. I'll, I will be back in a minute. Sorry.
All right, well, we'll have to make do with what we got. Uh. Okay. Sorry about that. So I was on the hunt to look for more Apple Talk adapters, and I found every adapter I didn't need. But uh, let me catch up on the chat here. Sorry to leave you hanging. Yeah, um, I can set up the workgroup server one day. I don't have the everything to, to do that right now. Ah, uh, yes, power computing. Uh, the name's not too bad, but yeah, I, I know what you mean, Dana. Four days later. Okay, so, um, what I was going to show you was um, setting up an Apple Talk network as all my parts fall to the ground. Um, so there are two different type of these local talk, Apple talk adapters. Uh, there's Apple's version, and then there's the phone net version from Farallon and other companies that copied them. Uh, I was going to show the Apple version, but um, while I can show you the connectors, I don't have enough of these little boxes to actually uh, do what I wanted. Uh, you need one box per computer, and I just have so many of the phone net ones that they're, they're much more easily available. So I have two of these Apple ones. Uh, so one has to go to a printer. Uh, and there's another one there. But the problem is this one is uh, is meant for an original Mac, which I'm not going to plug in right now. So uh, I'm going to put that on the side here. Uh, but I'll use uh, the, the phone net solution. So this is by Farallon. Uh, they were a Mac accessory peripheral manufacturer for a long time. They got bought out a while back. The name has changed. Come on, camera. You gotta focus here. You gotta. You gotta. Come on. Maybe it's like pin focus on my face, but do it. Do it. Wow. Hold on, please. Make me make me go and get the settings here. Maybe. There we go. So this is a Farallon adapter. It has two RJ11 phone jacks there. Uh, so you could plug that in and daisy chain it to different other jacks on the network. Um, this is a little terminator. So this is actually just a phone jack with a little resistor there uh, between two pins. I know it's not focusing, so I apologize. Uh, and that just goes into one when you're not using two connections. So basically this is plugged into your one of your computers and then you have one cable going out to another box and if you don't have another cable going out to the other box you have to terminate it. Uh, the way Apple's cabling system handled that is they have proprietary cables with three wires. This used telephone cable which only used up two wires. So with Apple's system it was self-terminating because they had that extra wire. Uh, this is not the case. So you need that little terminator. You could buy them or you can make them. They're not that hard to do. Um, so how this works is, get a simple example here. So we have two adapters. We have a phone net and we have a Maju net. Same exact thing, same exact purpose. Uh, let's pretend this is plugged in to our computer. And let's pretend this is plugged into our printer. Or no, let's do the opposite way around. Sorry. Uh, this has two ports on it, and this is going to be plugged into our printer. So we need one plug from here, plugging into here, and then that cable goes to our computer. Now our computer is only connected to that printer, so it's going to be plugged in like this, and we have a termination there. Now, let's pretend there's a second phone line in here on this port, that's going to continue our network and go to yet another computer with another one of these adapters. So it's a little hard to visualize, but essentially you have one of these dongles connected to every uh, computer serial port that needs to be on the network. And depending on if that computer is plugged into one device or multiple devices, you either need a terminator or you need another cable there. And then it goes on and on. So you can see why it would be uh, quite useful to have one of these printers or a computer connected to a file sharing system because uh, using Apple Talk and the local talk cable system or phone net cable system, you could create a, a pretty simple network with, you know, pretty 
pretty inexpensive cables. So yeah, that is that is that. <laughs> and I have I have another one here too. Got a lot of dongles, a lot of dongles. Um, yes, yeah, so let's let's see if we can set up something. How about that? Placed in the box without anything. I'm trying. Sorry, your your spelling is. Uh, I'm just trying to make sense of what you're saying here. It sounds like it was in the box, no packaging, and it exploded. That's not good. A compact Mac, C O M P A C T, not compact. That's a computer. Uh, I wouldn't pay more than a hundred dollars for it because it needs to be recapped. And unless you're really happy about that printer and keyboard, I would even pay less than that. That's just me. That's that's just me though. That might be the only one you ever see for a year or two. That's everyone's a little different. Uh, and then last thing I wanted to show you is this is. Uh, this is Apple's proprietary uh, local talk cable. So this is the, the three uh, pins there. And it has this little locking mechanism, so it will stay in that. Uh, and then you have this coupler. So if you want to extend the network with two cables there, you could just couple them, which is pretty neat. So that's what their cabling system is. You know what? It is fun to do. It's just very slow. <laughs> uh, this is fine for printers. I would not do this for file sharing, especially with Ethernet, if you had that availability. But uh, yeah, this is fine for printers and fun stuff like that. So, okay, we have our card installed. Um, what I'm going to do is plug in this with the Terminator into the port of that printer. So, uh, again, these are heavy. Um, we have this uh, serial port here. So I'm just going to plug this in like that got that right there Oop. there we go ah uh, yes ethernet on a se is wonderful okay um and then we're gonna plug in a phone cable so that's gonna go here all right make sure <laughs> Looks like I, I cut this this phone cable, but I didn't I didn't cut the wires. I just cut the plastic, so that should be okay. I put this. Oh, that's right. I had an extension cord. We plug the power in, so we can plug in this printer. Okay. Ah, there we go. <laughs> you have been terminated by the scuzzy termination. Thank you, Dana. Eep. <laughs> I'm glad you're able to super chat now. That's very much appreciated. Thank you very much, sir. That is very kind of you. So all, all your super chats and your super stickers and all that fun stuff help me acquire more weird things and video capture stuff like this, you know, so I could I could do these crazy streams. So thank you. <laughs> probably nothing changed, Dana. That's probably what happened. Uh, so telephone cable, uh, most of it actually has four... Uh, four... Um, wires inside this only has two but the whole advantage of Farallon's phone net system was back in the day if you used a telephone system a fax system or internet and you used a telephone cable you could use the two cables that were not primarily used uh, for internet like the two internal cables rather than the outside cables or whatever you could use those cables uh, for networking and leave your existing telephone system alone so offices did not have to rewire things which was why they'd like to use this type of system. Okay, um, what else, Mike? But, but you can't strictly use this dongle to get online. That's, I mean, there, there are exceptions to that, but it's not the, the idea behind it. <clears throat> okay, so let's, um, let's plug in this. Uh, to this computer. We're just going to do a simple network and then maybe we'll expand it with some other machines. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Alright, so let me plug this in and now I'm going to uh, plug this into the uh, the modem port on the back of the machine. <clears throat> okay. So let's switch this back. Again, I think the battery in my mouse is uh, dying here. 
and let's get the webcam back on. There we go. Yeah, I have a, I have a bunch of Ethernet transceivers. Um, they are they were plentiful back in the day. I don't know how easy they are to find now, but I have some thin net Ethernet transceivers. I have some uh, T base Ethernet transceivers, stuff like that. Um, you'll find them on like the Macintosh Facebook groups. Every once in a while, somebody will be like, I have all these cables. Does anybody want them? And you could usually get a pretty good deal on them. Okay. So, um, let's see here. So it looks like we do need some software for the image writer because, um, yeah, that's going to be a tricky thing. Uh, I have a disc here somewhere. Hold on. No. Oh, there we go. Hey, look. I had a disk image right here. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. See, if you download enough of this stuff again and again, sometimes you're good. <laughs> I have a ton of AUI adapters, but I find that only a few actually work. It might be an old capacitor in there or just a loose wire or something. They're, they're not too complex devices. Uh, but that's just me personally. Maybe maybe I all the ones I have pretty much work. Apple Talk not enabled in Chooser. Don't forget to yes, no, I, I, I need to install the, the correct printer driver first. Okay. Read me. The namer is an application program that you can use to name or rename a network laser writer or image writer. Only a network administrator or network support person can use this application. You should not be able to use any randomly named printers. Uh Okay, cool. All right, so first off, I need to plug this printer into the power. Uh, let me get a power cord to do that. This should not take long. Oopsie. I almost dropped the printer off the off the platform here. Yeah, let me uh, grab a cord. One second. Okay. Let's see if it turns on. Yes, it does. It gives me an error light because there's no paper in there, but... Uh, We'll reuse this piece of paper just for our test here. Uh, so nothing too exciting. I'm just putting this piece of paper in. But the printer turns on with that new card installed. So that's a good sign. Let me turn it on again. No error light. That's good. All right, cool. Yeah, the Asante ones I haven't really had a problem with. Uh, it could be a few things, but um, uh, maybe next time you're over, Brian, we could take a look <laughs> when you pick up your uh, typewriter. All right, so um, I need to put these in the control in the uh, extensions here. All right, and so we're just gonna, we only have this one now, so. And we're going to put that in the extensions folder. Again, if anybody has an image writer LQ printer, I will love one of those. So we're going to go to Apple Talk here. And we're going to enable Apple Talk on the modem port because that's where I plugged in that adapter to. <laughs> Sorry. You might want to wash your eyes. Then we go to chooser and here we go so we have our apple talk image writer here uh, but the printer is not on oh it is on actually um but i think i actually have to name it hold on a second available devices okay so let's see if the dongle is, has a little light on it one of these dongles did uh, this one does not. You know what? Let me change it to the one with the light on it so I know if this thing is working or not. <laughs> yes, washing your hands is a good idea. Uh, 
If you know somebody that has one for sale, let me know. Email me at mac84tv at gmail.com. Uh, I would love to get in touch with them, although it's probably not a, a good idea. <laughs> Okay, so none of the lights on this little adapter are on, but <laughs> this phone line is not exactly helping me here. Hold on. There we go. Um, yeah, let's, uh, let me do something here. Let me drag that there. Yeah, I, I guess I have to name the printer first. I've never done this. Name of new name of device. Apple. Yeah, no. Oh, searching Apple Talk image writers. No Apple Talk image writer found. Try again. Click on the Apple Talk image writer icon. Right, let's uh, try one more thing. Yeah, let me let me reboot. I mean, it showed up in the chooser, but let's just restart just to play it safe. <clears throat> uh, I will get another phone cable too, just in case it is that. I'm just looking for a telephone cable. One second. No, well, PhoneNet only uses two cables. Um... <laughs> Dana. <laughs> uh, PhoneNet only uses two cables, but it might be using the other two that this cable doesn't have. So I'm looking for uh, I'm looking for that other cable. The oldest printer I have is an ImageWriter One model, well, an Apple one at least. You would think a phone cable would be easy to find, but I haven't had the need to use a phone cable in a long time. I did find a... Ugh. It's alright. I did find a Super Mac mouse, which is pretty cool. It's just a, a, a cheapo mouse with the Super Mac logo on it. We'll put that over here so I don't drop it again. Yeah, if it uses the outer two, there's no outer two cables. It's just the inner two here. So that's probably why it's not working. So let me go grab another one. Uh, I did find more more wires though. 
But yeah, let me let me go to the other side of the basement uh, and find some phone cables. I know I have like new ones in the plastic wrap. I just need to find where I put them. So give me one second here. Uh, I should have After Dark on here to keep you guys company. Really? Hold on. There's like this, uh, this demo After Dark thing. Be right back. I'm going to reboot again. Well, I found a phone cable. But it's all tangled. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta tangle this. I think it's one and a half cables because one has the M broken off. Right, this this has the end broken off, so this one is no good. But I have a crimper tool somewhere. If I ever find it, I could fix this cable. Uh, but I have, uh, looks like I have at least one. So hold on. Do the Mac clones have this? Have a Mac starter chime? Yes, they do. At least this one here and the other one I have. They do. Are you kidding me? All of these are cut. That does not help me. Does not help me at all. <laughs> these are three separate phone cables and they're all cut. What's the best Mac emulator? It depends on what you want to do, man. Sheep Shaver works. Basilisk 2 works. Yeah, I have, I have like, a. I know I have a, a box full of, like, phone cables. Where that box is, is escaping me at the moment. Because of course it is, because I'm looking for it. Oh, well, yeah, Royal Elements, what was that? Oh, about the chimes, yes. <laughs> So these are three phone cables that all have one side, and then the other side is, is just cut off. Now, yes, I could solder them. I'm not planning to do that now. These will be for another project or something. Back to the drawing board. Let me uh, see if After Dark wants to work. Ooh, can of worms. That's a good one. <laughs> I love that one. Uh, let's see. Enjoy some toast. I'll be right back.
Okay. Yes, actually, my Umax clone is from Europe uh, or Japan because it's actually labeled an Apis 2000, which was the Umax equivalent of the C500 series, I believe, but it had a different name. Okay, so I found another one of these Apple-branded local talk adapters. I'm going to use that because I can't find any phone cables at the moment. So maybe that'll work out. So let me uh, just do a switcheroo here. Okay, so this cable here will go to this box here, and this box will plug in to the printer. So let's see if that'll work. Hopefully it will. For all I know, the local talk card is broken, or the printer is broken, who knows. But let's try it. Again, uh, let me try, let me try testing something here. Yeah, I'll switch ports. That's that's a good idea. And I am plugged into the right port. Here's, so I'm plugged into the printer port now. So let's change Apple Talk. Go to the printer port. It's not, it's not, it's not seeing the printer. Let me, let me look up the, the manual for this thing. Yeah, it's printing garbage right now because it's it's on the local talk network and it's it's sending signals to it. Oh, I have to set the dip switch. That's what I forgot about. Do not run your Apple Talk 2 on Apple Talk network unless dip switch 2 and 4 is closed. Uh could stop the network from functioning. Okay, so we're going to fix that. Derp switch. <laughs> Oopsie doodle, that's what happens when you try and rush things and you don't read things. Ah, oh boy. Okay, we're gonna unplug this from the power. It's a good thing I didn't screw this back in because we're gonna have to open it up again. And that's the, the garbage that you get, just like random characters printed. Uh, when the machine is not set to the right dip switches.
All right, no worries, buddy. See you later, Dana. Thanks for the uh, the pep talk. Yeah, we're gonna get this going. I get this printed, and then I'm gonna take a bit of a break and, and sign off because I got other things I need to do today. It's almost four o'clock. Holy crud! All right, let's uh let's get this going here. All right, here are our dip switches here. Let's follow these instructions. Dip switch stands for dual inline package switch. How about that? Did not know that. Okay. With small screwdriver or strong finger now flip switch four on block switch to the closed or down position. Switch four. One, two, three, four is closed. Okay, I think that is good. I think that'll work. All right, so hopefully that resolves our issue. Welcome back, Jay. I am glad you are nutritionally nourished. Okay, let's plug this back in. And Greg never left. He's been a stalker. Okay. Oh, boy, these things are heavy. It's like the eighth time I've said that. Okay, let's see if this wants to work now. It would help if the, the cable was plugged into the printer, didn't it? Wouldn't it? Try that again. Nah. Hey, it's there. At least it sees it. Yay. All right, so we see the printer. Let's see if we can name it. There we go. All right, let's name this uh, Mac 84 Image Writer. <laughs> I have no idea if this is gonna work. <laughs> All right, cool. So if I drag this to the trash and I go to chooser, Say we were on a, a network of a bunch of computers and stuff, and we went to here. There we go. We renamed our image writer. Isn't that cool? I didn't know you could actually do that. That's pretty sweet. I'm excited. All right, cool. Oh, you like my videos. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to swing this around like that, and I am going to position the camera to look at the printer away from my smiling face here. And we're going to see if we could actually print out something over a network. Uh, it's kind of, let me make this a little bit bigger. There, that'll be okay. Why, well, thank you. I, I very much appreciate the feedback. <laughs> $25. $30. <laughs> $30. <laughs> All right, let's, let's have some fun here. Let's go to... Uh, Let's do a, uh, a fun thing here. Oh, let's just do a sign. Oh, 
Oh boy, there's so much we could choose here. I remember do I remember having this this border printed out on our image writer printer when I was a kid. <laughs> Only old printers, Brian. Only old printers. <laughs> Facts. Let's see what else we got here. Business backdrops. Strictly only for business. Ha! <laughs> Projector. Typewriter. Floppy disks, oh boy. A lot of these are patterns. Uh, that's going to use up a lot of ribbon. Yeah, this is fine. Okay, we have this interesting thing here. Um, yeah, I guess this is like... Let's see. Uh, four... And it froze. I forgot this program loves to freeze on this machine. I don't know why. But we will have to use Apple Works or something else. I always forget that this freezes on this machine sometimes. I don't know if it's the version of System 7. I don't know if it's just an extension that was installed. I don't know if it's a font issue. But it loves to freeze on this machine. Loves to do it. <clears throat> So we're rebooting again, just waiting for this to boot up. Sorry for the inconvenience. Very sorry. We will get this working right again. This is a, to the 28 people that are watching, this is what a Macintosh clone looks like when it boots up. Oh my goodness, we've been doing this for three hours and 40 minutes. Holy. Oh boy. All right, let's let's try this again. Oh, come on. Apple works. So let's do it. A uh, painting. And everyone, everybody knows what I'm going to do now. So everyone's going to hate me. But. No, that's not. That's, so where's the paintbrush? Uh, I want the bigger one. There we go. That's the. There we go. The bit of, good old Mac OS smile here. We're not going to be able to see the color, but whatever. Today is June 19th, 2020. Why, thank you. And let's see how this prints. Here we go. It works! Woohoo! <laughs> I 
Yay! <laughs> oh, that works beautifully. Oh, that is great. Oh, that is awesome. Well, we have our, our first Apple Talk printout of, of many to come, I'm sure. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, it's very hard to, to kill one of these dot matrix printers. I, you know, I bought it at the recycling center. I felt bad for it. I am very happy that it is working. This is the image. This is the uh, the ribbon that came with it. It must be 20-something years old at this point. Probably more. Look at that. I have a color ribbon, actually. Um, but I, it's the only one I really have, so I don't, I don't want to... Uh... You know what? Let me go get it. Here's the color ribbon. It's it's been used. It is it is not the most beautiful color ribbon. It may not have much color left on it. Let's give it a try. Why why the heck not? It's always hard to get the ribbons in sometimes because they're a little bit of a tight fit. There we go. All right. Hey, that might be true. All right, and let's uh, get a fresh piece of paper here. Kind of ripped. I don't know if I could use this one. Nope. Well, that'll be a scrap paper. Okay, let's try that again. All right, much better. We're gonna we're gonna do something colorful now. It does. There's a there's a crack on the back, but it uh, overall not too bad. So let's let's do a new document here. Let's uh, let's draw something very colorful.
Throw in a little color classic here. All right, Greg. Well, we did actually print, so there. <laughs> yeah, under the three-hour mark, too. Oops. Do our apple colors here. We got uh, red, purple, and blue left. Do red. Oops. And purple. And blue. How about that? <laughs> yeah, 3D Mac A4 logo. <laughs> Yeah, the Mac 84 logo, it, uh, the the artwork they actually did for it is um, is based off of a Macintosh color classic. So, all right, let's uh, save this. But uh, I'm not done yet. Let's see. Let's see what else we can do. Good. Let's add a little feet. No. Oh, what else can we do? Oh, we get we can do the Mac. OS logo, I guess. Let's let's do that below here. Not bad for using a thirty year old mouse, huh? I'm not going to get the exact colors right, but we're not being perfect here anyway. Oh, what a happy little Mac. Yay! Live! <laughs> oh, yeah. I, I've gotten that, too. But it's a risk you're willing to take when you're wearing old Apple stuff. <laughs> All right. So we got, um, we got uh, a very poorly drawn color classic here, which uh, maybe could use little lines here. Eh, whatever. <laughs> yes, let's uh, hide that for a second. So you can see what that looks like. So we just have to say Mac 84 the live, that's all. Oh, okay, that's, it's very fitting then, Trina. That's very cool. So you could, yes, you could, you could say that the pin was intentional then. All right, so uh, let's print this out. Let's see how it'll look. I, I have no idea how this is going to work uh, or look. 
But let's let's try. <laughs> Five dollars. Actually, let's let's see if we could uh, move this guy. Let's see where we go. There we go. Uh, we're we're gonna say faster because I don't I don't know how good this uh, color ribbon is, but uh, actually, page setup. Uh. I forget how I tell it it's color or not. I think it just knows. Oh, I guess we'll, we'll find out. Let me turn on the printer. I love how it says... Oh, let me click on that here. I love how it says up here, it says Mac 84 Image Writer. <laughs> oh, man. I love that. That would be really cool. Yeah, I'm looking into stickers and, and enameled pins and stuff, but um, I, I, I still have a bucket of buttons that... I have to do something with it. So, all right. So let's see how this prints, if it does anything at all. Uh, I got some color. <laughs> It's a little different. <laughs> it's just, <laughs> just, a, just a little bit, just a little bit different. <laughs> oh, that is, that is art. That is art right there. That is, wow. Yeah, like I said, this color ribbon, um, ain't too beautiful. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder if, uh, I wonder if there's a, a reason why it didn't print out in color. Let me, let me try something here. Uh, not, that's not what I want to do. Um, no, what am I doing here? Hold on. Um. Yeah, there's there. I would have to make a test page, I think. Um, yeah, let me just do a, a, a type document, I guess. Let's just do something simple blue, red, yellow. Green and uh, purple. All right. Yeah, I think I think it's I think the printer doesn't know it has a color ribbon installed. That's gonna be my guess. There's you there was usually a uh, special effects no gap. There was usually an option that said color or not. You know, let me let me look up the booklet real real quick. I just want to make sure I'm not I'm not uh, assuming anything. Because I can't remember. Seven color printing. To print colors on the image writer color ribbon with the software, you can print documents up to six colors. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, well, that doesn't help. Um, there's a PDF here. 
It's gonna load up. I'm just gonna load up the user guide here. Which is gonna take a little while to download because it's a big file. While that does that, can I put an outline on this? That's all right. Okay, here is, that's like a sales thing. What, what did I download here? With color, ribbon, and appropriate software. Okay. Uh, let me just go to the Internet Archive. I know they have a manual on this. I have one, too. I just don't know where it is. And you should be able to print color over the network, too. That shouldn't be the problem here. Let's search for the word color in the manual. I don't think there's a dip switch or anything. I think it's it's pretty simple. Ribbons will not run out. They will only wear out after use. Change the road when characters look faded. Okay. <laughs> I am crazy. Hello, Mike. <laughs> but look, look at the beautiful printout we did before. Are you going to put my colorful picture on the fridge? <laughs> we installed an Apple Talk card in here, Mike. We've been having fun. De fun is a... Is, is, that's my definition of fun, but... Uh, color testing. If you install a color ribbon, this test will print all the colors. Turn the printer on. Uh, and print out the head moves. So stop the printer test on off button. Okay, we could do that. Let's see if the color wants to work. Like I said, this ribbon is, is also very suspicious. It got stuck. It got stuck. Ah. Darn tractor feed. Hold on. Yeah, I, I know I have one color ribbon that works. This might not be the good one. Oh, boy. This paper keeps getting jammed. That's, that's the paper I have is like a three three page composite so it likes to get stuck that should be fine there we go oh sorry I have to uh move my my mouse here which does not want to there we go yeah me and my image writers all right peter no worries thanks for the for the kind words all right so um yeah we're gonna do that printer test and it should come out in color i guess so let's try that
all the colors of the 8-bit rainbow. So we do get color. The color ribbon does work. It must just be a software thing. Because look at that. We got black. We got yellow. We got purple. We got blue. We got orange. We got green. We got, you know, different colors. Look at that. Pretty cool. So. Uh, yeah. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta try this again. I think we get to work. So, what are we doing wrong here? What are we doing wrong? Um, let me continue looking at that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> yes, Mike has a very good point there. This guy is crazy. I am crazy. Eep! Thank you very much, Mike. That's very, 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 very kind of you. Um, now, if you don't know this, Mike, you could queue up your link. Um, if you don't know this, Mike from Mike's Mac Shack is giving away a laptop. He's giving away an iBook G4. Really nice 12 inch power, uh, iBook G4. Has a battery that lasts like two to three hours. It's a, it's a crazy long battery. I used to own this iBook. I gave it to Mike. He, he no longer needs that because he has an iMac now. And so he's giving it away. It's a fantastic machine. It's in beautiful condition. I used to own it. Um, so that has that factor going for it, I guess. But, uh, yeah. Uh, he was. He is an admin. What are you talking about? I clicked on it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Mike is an admin. Unless someone clicked him else otherwise. It's showing on my end. Yeah, it has Steve's fingerprints on it. There you go. So there's the link that Mike just pasted there. Um, so click on that link, watch his video, find out how to submit yourself for that giveaway, and you will have the chance to win a beautiful iBook. So subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack, and uh, there you go. That, that'll be, that'll be a, a, a very good thing to do, and uh, I fully support that. <laughs> oh, Brian, I, I, I have uh, a lot of sympathies for you there. Sorry. <laughs> oh, boy. That, that's rough. Printing in color. To print in color, you need a program that can send color commands to an image writer, too. The default color is black, and only color software can print differently. Uh, to print in color, install a color, color ribbon. Um, da, 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 da. All right, so I'm reading this chapter. Uh, adjusting paper thickness, loading envelopes. It, it seems like the software should just do it by itself. So, 55 sub subs away. So yeah, everyone subscribe to Mike's Mac Shack. Sweet. Almost there, buddy. All right, so we're, we're gonna try this again. And I'm going to use the, the pink side of this paper because I don't really care. I'm just doing a test here. I think uh, one of these got messed up a little bit. Hold on. Yeah, I'm excited too. I don't need to win it. I don't want to win it. I will not enter because I don't want to win it. And then get accused of cheating by some individuals. <laughs> there we go. All right, let's let's see if our if our little test works here. Will he print in color? Will print in H E color? I'm very confused. <laughs> well, let's see what happens. Say best. Let's hit print. Hey, there we go. Wait, what the heck is going on? <laughs> uh, it, it's sort of spazzing out there. It is printing in color. 
Uh, is not so happy. Oh, I mistyped it. Ha ha ha. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's try faster. <laughs> Stream's gone dark. Uh oh. Went back? No. That's weird. I have no drop frames. <laughs> Maybe this, uh, this printer is taking down my entire network. Can you guys still hear me? Uh, YouTube says I have an excellent connection. But uh, it's been known to lie before. Oh, YouTube. Uh, and it doesn't want to print. Hold on. Okay, now we're back? Maybe? Alright, yeah, YouTube has been weird these days. I don't know what's going on. But um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna try and finish this stream up here. We're gonna try and print a color. Let's try. It. We were almost successful. We got some more colors than we did before. Sorry. Um, yeah, so it's working a little bit better. Again, this color ribbon is questionable, and it seems to just give up. <laughs> I don't know if that's because of the Apple Talk card or what. Uh, let's just try, last thing, I'm gonna just plug it in using a direct cable. Nothing fancy, no networking or anything. Oh, no, then I have to switch the dip switches. No, I'm not doing that. <laughs> too lazy to do that. Uh, open this thing up too many times. Um, but, yeah, I think I think we could say the color does work. But uh, it's a little iffy. That's okay. He tried. He tried. All right, so we're going to turn this printer off here. And we're going to put that uh, plastic cover back on. Speaking of printers... I found something while I was cleaning up. It's an ink tank. A color ink tank for a style writer. So, how about that? <laughs> Still sealed. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know if, uh, if it's still good. I, I don't think it is. The shelf life on these things is like, what, 18 months? It's been a bit... Bit longer than that. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we've been streaming for over four hours here. So I think I'm gonna wrap it up, unless anybody has any questions or wants to see anything before I do that, because this is much longer than I expected to do today, and I need to have some lunch and stuff. It's almost dinner time. I didn't even have lunch yet. All I had was a cookie. But um. Yeah, it's been fun. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to close out that. Let's see. Well, that's something I learned today. I did not know about this namer utility to name to name uh, printers. So that's really cool. Well, you know what, Greg? In another four hours, I could do another stream. How about that? I need to I need to rest. I can't just stream forever. I don't, I don't work like that. I don't. <laughs> Barely halfway. Oh boy. Let me, let me see how many, how many of you are actually viewing here. My, my mouse battery keeps dying, which is not good. It's low here. It, it keeps flickering in and out. 20 people. 20 people. I think that, uh, that we will, we will end here. Um, if I feel like it, maybe I'll crack open some Compact Max tonight. How about that? But uh, I don't know. 
the, the, there's a lot of other things I want to get done today. It is my day off, so I'm not, not going to stream every hour of the day. But <laughs> Oh, boy. Oh, well, thank you. I'm glad uh, you were able to catch the stream this time. I know the time difference makes it annoying, but uh, all right. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate it. Yeah, so I'm going to uh, to uh, sign off here, but uh, what uh, I will do is I will leave you with a little message. So, thank you for watching. Oh, look at that. Oh, wait, we have to set this to Chicago. There we go. Now it's Mac 84 Street. <laughs> oh, boy. Yep. Well, thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you for the super chats. Thank you for the super stickers, all that fun stuff. Uh, I appreciate all of you watching and subscribing and following me on social media. So uh, I appreciate that. And a big shout out to all my patrons. Uh, I couldn't do this without you. So I hope you enjoyed uh, watching me print out stuff and do some disc archiving and whatever I was doing at the beginning of the stream. Uh, but that's about it. So thank you, everybody, for hanging around. And uh, I will see you soon. Take care.